I think we left off with a bit of a fissure in opinions. Yeah, you you, you just kind of <laughs> started to discuss the what, whens, and why fours of who do you trust? Who don't you trust? Um, and that's kind of where we're at. So um, let me let me give you some appropriate any type sounds. There you go. I think I probably look pretty tired. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because you've been busting your hump all day, scrubbing steps and um, washing walls and doing all kinds of uh, penalty type things to the for the Temple of Ulric. Uh, and our heroes are all gathered around this table up here in the far left corner. Okay. So, <clears throat> up to you guys. What do you want to do? So, when uh, Bertilda sits down, I'm just going to lean in kind of like quarter of the way across the table and I'm going to say, we're not trusting that wolf game guy. No, 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 no. Who? The, uh, uh, the, the fire wizard, um, the three of us met while you were, you know, doing stuff. You went to see a fire wizard alone? We weren't alone. It was three of us. It was me, Odette, and Katara. <coughs> I believe anyway. he, had a, he had a bit of a Greek squad, too, so it was like, even on... Did he have a squad? I thought he was alone. Thought, wasn't he alone? He, yeah, he uh, well, two. he was by himself unofficially, but there were lots of... Steve adores that kept looking in oh, your okay. direction and play so there were, the assumption was um he had um some um yeah, he had possible protection. people around just he had, acting right. you know that they weren't so someone's just gonna be like be that as it way as it may we can't trust him no way no how not happening yeah, he, um... Okay, <laughs> I start to say that was really stupid and dangerous, and then I'm just not going to say. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to just hold my tongue. They live for stupid and dangerous. <laughs> That's what they do. Well, we were told to meet him, or we wouldn't be able to meet him. And we met him, and it wasn't helpful. He's but, some kind of grifter. Ah, ah, but, Matilda, I don't trust every wizard we come across. See? Evidence. Proof. Right. No, knowing our previous conversations on the subject of trust. But you trust them enough to go to the docks when they tell you to go? Well, we didn't really yeah. know much about them at that point other than... Exactly! <laughs> right, but, you know, it's a possible lead and we only have so many days to live anyways, so we might as well take some risks. I suppose. Because um, I don't know about you, but we're on a, I'm on a time clock where you know slowly, um, you know, chaotic mutation and death awaits me. Oh, it's gonna happen soon. Don't worry. Oh, shut up, Matthew Ben. Okay. Bertilda <laughs> just looks. Bertilda just looks too tired to to discuss any of it. She's just right. She's beat. On the topic of strategy, however. I've been thinking about what we need to do in order to do what needs to be done. And it really does just kind of hinge on getting the artifact at this point, which I mean, our best bet is, is with Conrad Mesmer having it. Um, we don't know how to destroy it though, do we? We don't know how to destroy it, but first we need oh. to prove to him that we <laughs> can I'm not even going to tell Bertilda that the guy knows how, uh, because I don't trust him enough to read up. And then well, it's he gonna, claims he's going to open a can of worms. He has an issue, yeah, yeah, yeah. and he come up with a. He says, but both you and Matthew yeah. Bain put two and two together and said this ritual does not sound like a chaos destroying ritual to us. <laughs> it sounds like an artifact eating ritual. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it results okay. in alien versus predator. <laughs> so we we can um, return to uh, you know dear Klemperer, first guy we talked to, who set us on this journey in the city. Uh, there is the priestess of Sigmar. Uh, what was her name? Uh, Caterell. 
I forgot as a player. But I know. I was I hoping you would remember because I reminded you. I, you did. Clara Robar. Thank you. Thank you, oh, Matilda. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, you have um, not gone and visited with her yet. Um, and that's before even dealing with Mesner. We don't have to deal with him. So the fissure can stay fizzed out. I think we'll have to deal with him but eventually my, my, if my he's the one who really has to. My issue with this, him. though, is given the yeah, one previous one conversation we had with uh, Mr. Hammerfist, is um, he's anticipating an ambush scenario in, I think, tomorrow around noon. Oh, did we set that up? I don't know. Did we set I, that up? I recall that being the angle we left that conversation with. Oh, I could have sworn we, we said we were going to talk it over and get back to him. You did. Oh, okay. Like not, not like set that in was, stone. That the was ambush. a plan you discussed, but you hadn't set that in front of him yet. Okay, okay. I thought it was like a go ahead thing. I don't know. He was threatening to kill me the whole time. I was a little distracted. Yes. Me well, too. yeah, he, he actually <laughs> threatened to kill. He did, he did suggest that. We, that you and that he and Aldet and Bertilda should just kill you two elves and be done with it. He did suggest that mm. on multiple occasions. So, so, so we Chet, can't be all bad. <laughs> Sorry, Chet. It's been two and a half months since we last it's, played it's this game. It's been a minute. Yeah. yeah. So we're a little uh, fuzzy <laughs> in our memories about yeah. events. E even um, I had to rewatch the last thirty minutes of last time's stream to remember yeah. everything we got to. <laughs> Oh, I just no remember way. I don't trust any of them, and I think that we should just play them all against each other <laughs> to get what we need. And that's, I think, what I'm trying to get at is, regardless of their motivations and who they are, where they are, if we can play them against each other to get what we need, we're ultimately saving the world from chaos. So you know, not Jeez. to be a not to be a utilitarian moralist. I hear girls don't like those, but. <laughs> Okay, I, I could, <laughs> I could not care less about their petty squabbles. Right, but we should come up with a, a a list to determine who we want to screw over the most and who we would want to screw over the least. Right? Like, uh, <laughs> I think the smell list of fuckery. Be over I, I don't particularly want to screw anybody over. It's just that's going to be an unfortunate byproduct of this. It looks like. But as long as we're all on the same page, that that's what we're going to do. You know. <laughs> We can We're gonna then... do whatever it takes to get the artifact and destroy sure. it. Sure. Yes. So, the, which means we can't really screw over Messner that much because if he has it, and we screw him over, he will not we'll give it to us. We'll get it because we can't even find the place where it's being held. So, so, so you're right, Bertilda. Trust or no trust, it doesn't matter. If we mess with him, he will just distance himself from us or kill us. We just need to find an angle to play to get the artifact. I'm just saying we oh, need to leave our options open. Us, but yeah. yeah, he said screw over Gotrick. Get rid of Gotrick. So I don't believe we can trust him to give us the artifact, whether we do that or not, though. We sure. need we sure. need a contingency plan for when he inevitably screws us over. Let's cross that bridge when that happens. For now, let's focus on what we can actually do to make what could possibly happen happen. Because, frankly, I don't think we have enough pull in the city as it is to have a contingency plan against one of the most well-renowned and respected um, men of intellect in the entire city. Possibly the world. Okay. I'm so. still hearing a lot of boot licking here. <laughs> so. well, That's literally my personality. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Catarell does best. <laughs> so we, if we do as he says, he might hold up his end. If he, he does, might not. But, but remember, his conditions were get rid of Gotrig and also find a way to destroy it. We don't have that yet. So we can talk to Dieter again, who's the, the Celestial Wizard Master. He sees everything. We can leverage our political <laughs> pull with Frederick because he's a gullible fool and we like him. We can talk to Clara because she's a religious I icon, not Ulrich, unfortunately. You know, the lesser of the two. I hear she's a admittedly. lot like you. I hear she's a lot like you. Who? 
And Clara. Clara's you know, a lot like, like who? Old, you. Me? You, with the whole, you know, like, oh, I'm not good enough. But I do that for Ulrich. You're saying right, she's right, into right, right. bondage. Likes <laughs> to whip herself. Well, between oh. the two of you, I'll have plenty of gods to please. Hey, uh, speaking of which, <laughs> um, Bertilda, could you perhaps maybe let the Church of Ulrich know that I'm a good guy and should not be banned from their establishment <laughs> for spouting truth? <laughs> About their ultimate fate, maybe? Yeah? Yeah. Right? I think it's best that until we figure out what your problem is. <laughs> I don't have a problem. What is this thing about problem? I'm fine. Your problem is that you embarrass me in front of the people I want to impress. <laughs> it is unbecoming of an elf. <laughs> it didn't embarrass you. I just spoke the truth. Which you is embarrassing. Truth, and I'm very, I'm very when, proud that you have discovered your truth. But maybe don't scream it. When you're in the, the company rooftops, of dignitaries, yeah. do you just present to them a chart of every time you've taken a shit? <laughs> Certain truths don't always need to be revealed, my friend. That should be between you and the apothecary or doctor or whatever they have in this world. <laughs> That's between you and the river where you... Dumped. I'm sorry, you were touched by him, the Ulrich himself, and yet they were still gouging us for medicine, if I recall, right? That's why I said what I said, if I remember. I don't even remember anymore. It was, Are we really going to get on was, the topic of organizing? It was seven already? months ago. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like months since I said it. <laughs> Time works really weird here in the old world. Uh, you know, it's all dwarf. <laughs> alternate timelines and just movie. Yeah. Yeah, um, the alt and alt dwarf stands for alternate, <laughs> and the dwarf stands for timeline. To be perfectly honest, after meeting the deputy high priest back in Minheim, I don't think I can speak for anyone else's faith. Um, I can only focus on my own and know that what I'm doing is right. You know, that's fair. So okay. I don't agree with them gouging us for money for something that I feel or Ulrich would want them to do, but they're not me. And I'm the one that answers to Ulrich. It's a big city with a lot of problems. I think it'd be selfish to hog all of the temple's healing in one day. Well, we, I still think we can talk to teacher. I Get a second agree. opinion. It sounds good to like touch a good base. idea. It'd be good to touch base. And then if you really want Caterell, we could talk to Clara, priestess. I wouldn't mind. I think it's, if we can find any allies that we could trust more than... I mean, I, I already have my Sigmar badge, though, so... <laughs> well, they might have like a, a, a one with like silver wings on it or something. Yeah, maybe you can prestige. Ooh, I like <laughs> prestige. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know. I like the sound of all of this. Aldette, you're being awfully quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with Dieter. Agree. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thanks, Aldette. <laughs> Whatever Satch is saying is the right thing. <laughs> <laughs> Who is, who is this Satch person? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I think we're going to retire for the night and okay. then go see Dieter in the morning when, when Bertilda yeah. rests a little bit. Cause She's falling she, asleep at the table right now. I bet she is. Alrighty. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. Yeah. Okie dokie. Well, um... You know where to find him. The shiny college where they open the door for you because they know you're coming. <laughs> Dieter. Okay, yeah, so you can either find him at the Celestial College. Um, you do know that he's been known to loiter around the Grove, which you've also been to. Um, 
and apparently has a house somewhere, but you don't know where that is yet. So. All right, I got super confused because I thought that music was coming from the tavern, and I was like, since when do they have a saxophone? But Darcy's in there watching something, and I can hear it, Wrong and it city. confused me. <laughs> Move you to the right city. You're in the wrong city. <laughs> oh, I was about to say this. Is Oof, the, there we go. The throwback. Okay. Um, oh my goodness, that's bright. Okay. Let's see. Me too, Beta. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> beta, your pants should have already been off, so, you know. Right? Get your pants off. Okie dokie. <laughs> Sag. That's my map. Hi, Shammy. It's been Just a minute. Put this down. Oh my God! What's up, brother? <laughs> we have not seen you in a you long doing, time. Jimmy. Good to see you, bro. Alrighty, celestial wizard. <laughs> Beta. <laughs> Let's find the celestial wizard for you. Alrighty, so um. So you want to head back and find old Dieter Klempfer. Okay, let me... Uh, it's like over by the church of St. Mar or something? Yeah, I've lost him. I think it's this he's, big ass building. He's fallen off the page somewhere. <laughs> oh no! I think it was this big ass building right here. Uh, Where is he? You to clamp for here we are. All it's just so hard to find. <laughs> they core can't find it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm trying to find the That's right the page. How many? Um, so the Celestial College is what you're going to, um, and the Celestial College. I'm is... betting it's that one. <laughs> it's such I you want know. it to be that one. <laughs> it is that one. It's got to be that one. You I think... just feel smart when I'm right. And I want to be right. Yeah, so that you is think the it's Celestial it's, College. Yes. You think it's yes! number ten? Yes. It's ten. Yes. Let's see if let's see if you're right. <laughs> you're right. Woohoo! Yes. <laughs> I'm so smart. I'm just gonna say it's that one and point at the screen. You don't know what I'm looking at. So. Yeah. So what we're gonna do is just to make life easy, we will go ahead and put. That's an odd couple all of a sudden. <laughs> Alright, yep, there we are. So, um, across the bridge in the morning then, um, you're going to the pre... You're, you're passing... The Temple of Sigmar. Did you want to stop in and see if you could find Claude or Roban, or do you want to maybe hit that up on the way out? I feel like I'm going to walk past and be like, we could stop by, but let's hit it on the way back. Get feeling, I have a feeling we're going to have to head up towards most of town afterwards. And then as I'm walking by, I'm going to be like, do you think at the Celestial College they've predicted that? Like they knew I was going to stop and think about that? Like if we had stopped... Would they have known to wait? <laughs> I kind of hope that they don't. They know, know we're coming today. Just because if they're that perceptive and they know that much ahead of time, they could be saving us a lot of time right now. Well, that's the guys, thing. Guys, 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 guys. They're. I mean, they're. Uh, It'd be a waste magic, of resources. When winter they're... magic doesn't work that way. I mean, they don't wake up just knowing things. There's spells to cast and rituals to do. <laughs> it takes time and power level and, and they have they have a certain amount of fucks that they have to give <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh... so, okay all right yeah. well as we've said before when you look you can't really look directly at the celestial college but you can kind of see it out of your peripheral if you know it's there which you guys do um 
Like before, you wander in. Um, inside, the air has no smell. It is clear. Um, the corridors and courtyards are calm and relaxing, covered in astral symbols. Um, everything is pristinely clean. Uh, and eventually, you are escorted through the doors to where you're blinded by light. And the next minute, not entirely sure how you got from point A to point B. But you will find yourself in Herr Mesner's um, Master Wizard's Chambers. Clumper. That's stuck right? in my head. Um, Dieter, <laughs> Dieter Klemfer. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Not Mesner. Uh, so, uh, upon visiting him, he looks at you and says, Oh, it's good of you to come back. So, um, what have you managed to find out? Has you have much success? I, I guess um, I'll take I'll take the role here. <laughs> um, it's in the hands of Conrad Messner, the artifact. Um, well, of course. It took us a good number of days to figure out, um, and he needs us to be able to present that we know how to destroy the artifact before he'll return it to us, as well as some other small errands. Um, which is responsible. I don't even want it if I don't know how to destroy it. Well, naturally. Good talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I is... forgot he's very short. <laughs> yes, uh... Master, is there a way that you know how to destroy such an artifact? Um, well, it's complicated. You're right, guys. This was a great plan. <laughs> if, you, if you could um, entertain that for us, uh, perhaps it would help us glean a better answer in the future. Well, there may be a more appropriate time to answer that question. If necessary. Some things have pros and cons. And before we accept the cons, maybe we should exhaust other options. Well, the, the only other option that has been presented to us is one that, well, Caterell and myself specifically do not trust whatsoever. But, uh, and, it is good to go with your intuition. I'm just going to look at them. <laughs> the man is a fortune cookie, I swear to God. That's what I was thinking. Why is he talking like the Chinese? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Celestial Wizard. <laughs> Sense. Yeah, he's he's like a magic eight ball. We just have to ask him yes or no questions. <laughs> um, do you have any suggestions as to who we should go to next regarding destroying the artifact? Uh, well, um, it would depend on who you have already talked to, I suppose. Oh, we um. We talked to you, uh, you know, Frederick, uh, Mesner, Theodora, uh, Goldtrick, Elizabeth, and uh, Sayer. Uh, some uh, of these people I am not familiar with, but some I am. Well, some of them are, are, are absolutely crazy, and I'm a perfect judge of that. <clears throat> well, um, <laughs> uh, sanity is, um, shall we say, a point of... Um, Don't say objective. Relevance. <laughs> some some can see somebody as being completely sane, while others could see them as completely insane, depending on your own personal sanity. Right? Like, I am perfectly normal, and yet now dead here, and Bertilda think differently. Like I said, don't say objective, so he just defined it instead. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> he aims to please. <laughs> <laughs> He's not aiming not aim very well right now. He says, Well, 
You mentioned um, Conrad Messner, yes? Yes. Well, he is a good contact of mine, and um, uh, being that he is of the college that he does represent, um, the vaults of the Light College do indeed contain an enormous number of known dangerous chaos artifacts. Still, I am sure that they are no threat as long as they are being kept there safe. Um, but while they possess the, posi the uh, abilities to contain and store such items, they are not the best at getting rid of them permanently. Think of the Light College more as they are very gifted as a dampening field but not so much as a permanent removal tool. Kind of like us. <laughs> <laughs> Who would you recommend as a permanent removal tool? Well, that's just it. Um, I know that... Um, If you have spoken to my friend, Lord Frederick, uh, he could be, uh, as I've said before, a good introduction for you. Only as a person that I could strongly recommend that you discuss anything with would be um, the Master Jade Wizard, Gulam de Champ. He hadn't met with him yet. Well, maybe that's something you might want to consider. At least before making decisions on which direction you should go. After all, if you <laughs> turn over every rock, you can see what lies underneath each and every one. As opposed to only having to choose what lies under the few that you know about. Sometimes the fourth rock has fewer poisonous bugs under it. He has a point. But sometimes I'm surrounded by crazy people. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't look thrilled at, at the concept of having to go talk to a yet another wizard. <laughs> um, They're everywhere. It's like an infestation. <laughs> okay, so I hate to suggest it, but you all know the, the whole phrase, fight fire with fire? No. I mean, I, wait. I know, I, I know the phrase, but we're not going that road. No, no. I already said no. Well, who who is suggesting fire in this case? I I didn't mean literal fire. Well, okay, mean, good because that's, we're that's we're I mean. not going to him. So who would we be fighting with fire? I look incredibly confused. <laughs> what God, Matthew that's... Bain's talking about? This is, this is par for the course. This is I, my uh... this is my concern. Just matching everyone everywhere we go, sure, in social media. But like, I just realized something, I didn't start. We we don't have anyone fighting with fire, so we don't have any reason no, to No, I, I don't fire. mean literal fire. I mean, right, right. If, if all the avenues that, of course, we have access to, or that we believe that we have access to, that we know of, it, it, we haven't looked at the fact that maybe the only way to destroy a chaos artifact is with a chaos artifact. Ba -ba -ba -bom. But we don't have another chaos artifact. Uh, I mean, Conrad Messner might. So we just put them in a cage and have them fight each other? Uh, I think the concern is um, if Conrad could have destroyed it, as he said, he would have. You're giving him a lot of credit. And understand that well, you know wizards are smart and everything, but... It's not so much that as it is um, Theodora vouched for him. Uh, Theodore Klemperer here is vouching for him. Literally everyone of any respect right, right. down in this city has high regards for him. What I'm saying is... Despite his attitude. I believe we <laughs> had the discussion that sometimes you have to take a risk. Maybe this is a risk that no one has been willing to take. Hmm. 
because what are what is it that we don't want to happen? We don't want the chaos artifacts to be together. Right. I just don't know if we're going to have access to a chaos artifact specifically designed to destroy other chaos artifacts. Well, who might know that? We may so have to go a bit more we, underground. You're suggesting we go find the Crimson Skull that's been trying to kill us ever since we killed almost all of them and ask them for help? I don't understand. I mean, we have been dealing with just the remnants of the Crimson Skull. Like, We don't have to tell them that we want their help. They don't have to know what we need their help with. They don't know who they are. Maybe that's what we need to be trying to figure out. But we also have much uh, more uh, pertinent leads, I suppose. Like, this is a hunch. We have hmm. a pretty respectable fellow, and I'm gesturing to the master wizard in the room, suggesting we go speak with another pretty respectable fellow, and we still have a high priestess to talk to. There are other contacts we haven't checked in on. Okay, I understand. I'm just saying that after, if, if, we exhaust all other possibilities and we still get back to square one. We may have to consider doing something a little outside the box and a little untoward. So call me crazy. Crazy. We have, there. And we <laughs> <Okay>. probably will. <laughs> I'm not entirely against what Bertilda is suggesting, but maybe not for the reason she's suggesting it. We should at least know where they are so we don't get surprised by them again, right? Por que no los dos? We? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> that's a different language. But I know, okay. that's the joke. <laughs> that's the, yeah. That was my joke. Um, they tried to kill us twice, as far as we know, once in our very hotel room and once on the alleyway. If there are any left in the city, it would be nice to at least be aware of where they could be and where come from. Not necessarily to have to ask them for help. That's doesn't make sense to me, but to be ready for them. Oh, yeah, I'm all for that. I don't personally endorse the idea of utilizing chaos in the fight against chaos. And um, that's what you can takes. you that's can quote me on that. Um, I will not. In fact, I will very not. In fact, and I'm kind of looking at Old Dead at this point, who's uncharacteristically silent. I'm pretty <laughs> sure uh, the two of us leaning more on the side of perhaps purging all chaos might have something uh, for you after attempting doing so. Well, I mean, I still think going to the Jade College is the play. Absolutely. But if we were to destroy something, maybe death could be useful? We haven't come to my my home, my college. That's also a good point. It's death. I just don't know. Destruction adjacent? How know? willing death is for visitors? Or... Uh, not very. Mm. They're... And they're not nearly as exciting or excitable as I am. You know, <laughs> yeah, a little, little, little bit more. As much as I complain depressing. about the company, if I was stuck with that other absolute fuckwad earlier, I would be. Yes, do you remember him? Yeah. Yes, he was a piece of. Yeah. Oh yeah, he hated me. It was, <laughs> it was fun. He oh. he consisted of what you smelled like at the time. I'm so moving, but it. <laughs> but yes. Um, well, so, sorry, sorry, Master Trevor. Um, we we are having a conversation on your time here. Oh no, this is quite all right. I have just been um, perusing some scrolls while you chat amongst yourselves. Uh, at one point, I will make though. If you wish to, if you are planning to go and find um, uh, Maitre de Champ, um, 
I would suggest you try to visit him at his home, not the Jade Temple. And where is his home? Um, well, it is, uh, far to the, um, west of here. Uh, close to the wall. Um, it's not very hard to miss. It is a very run-down, ramshackled place that is half fallen down and, uh, overgrown with plants. Oh, wait. Why? Jade mm, Because... Oh, J well, Jade, yes, but, I mean, run down. Okay. Well, um, as I've said before, he is a, um, active adventurer. Does not spend a whole bunch of times in the temple and, um, tends to keep himself to himself quite a bit. Uh, but if, um, from what I understand, he inherited the house. And has never really done anything to uh, improve it. Hmm. I can give you the address if you need. That would be helpful if I could read and write. If only there was someone in the party who could read. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would take down the uh, <laughs> address. No, yes, I mean, yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, it's here. <laughs> okay. So, um, we'll add that to your... Shop's house there. Voice. I'm upset about it. Right there. <laughs> okay. The elf is more like this. I need to remember. <laughs> well, well, thank you, Dieter. Uh, we will. We have plenty of people to still meet. So. Uh... Well, uh, yes, you do, and good luck. Mm -hmm. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna okay. I'm just gonna leave. All right. Um, where do you want to go? You want to cross the street to the Temple of Sigma, or do you want to go down to the east and uh, go see this Gulam de Champ fellow? I'm gonna look at my party members and kind of half shrug. Decisions, decisions. I'm game for anything at this point in time. Well, I I feel like the person who's clairvoyant might have had a better hunch than than I regarding what to do next. Does anybody else have <laughs> reservations to speaking to yet another wizard? Well, Bertilda does. Um... But he's listened to me yet. <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> for every, for every no, wizard I, you I... talk to in a day... Matthew Bain included. I owe you a pint when we return. No, no, wait, wait. <laughs> Catarol, shut up. That's one pint guaranteed every for, for Tilda, day. I just, I just want to try to make things Unless clearer. <laughs> the different colleges of wizards are like the different religious church and institutions. Where you have the Ulrichians, you have the Sigmarites to the Chaos Gods and all that stuff. It's the same. All Not all wizards are the same. Just hope you know that. <laughs> I don't think that's the argument you think it is. <laughs> uh, well, I, I don't know what you mean by that, but I'm making it, so there you go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we're, we're, we're all different. All the colleges are very different from each other. So I'm sure there'll be some you might like. <laughs> all right. Well, you spend the time it takes... To get to the home of Guillaum de Champ. Um, while the external walls of this house are somewhat solid, the house is crumbling under the onslaught of hundreds of plants. Um, one half of the house is completely overgrown. There are plants growing out of broken windows and from underneath the doors and all that sort of stuff. The other side of the house still seems to be somewhat uninterfered with by the throes of nature. 
Uh, and when you get there, you can indeed hear what sounds like sawing coming from the back of the house. Like, okay. I love that for us. <laughs> this is not as forbidden for boating as a, a dwarf's place, fortress. Well, I haven't been just... super thrilled with anybody's um, <laughs> <laughs> with anybody's domain yet, except for maybe Lord Frederick's. Oh, uh, and you liked um, and Hannah. Yeah, that you mm -hmm. liked Maximilian Sayer's house <laughs> with his rooftop gazebo and all that, and his amazing Wait, talent for only surrounding himself with incredibly attractive females. <laughs> I mean, hey. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> hey Gotta hey. have standards. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Okay, yeah, so uh, what do you wish to do? Go up to the door yeah, and just knock? Go up to the door and knock, I suppose. <laughs> okay. You hear a gruff, Ugh! and then you hear something like heavy, like clatter on a wooden table. I'm coming, I'm coming. Oh, he looks, oh. That's oh, I, I love this, this already. <laughs> Okay, the door is opened by a man who can only be described as the biggest, scraggliest beard that you've seen. It's got twigs and crap and leaves stuck in it. Other than that, he's got a very receding hairline, a long, thick, kind of black hair that's graying, slipped back off of his head. He's quite a sight, to be honest. Um, he looks at you and he says, Well... What do you want? I've got wood to saw. Master Duchamp. I, I am Master Duchamp. Ah, a certain Dieter Klemper suggested we come speak to you. Oh, did he? Well, I'll be sure to um tell him not to in not to send people to my door in future. <laughs> Would you care for some help, perhaps? Um, you don't look exactly, uh, the sort to be efficient at carpentry. Well, well, he is a master, uh, woodsman. It's so adjacent. That... Yes, yes, but prancing around in woods in tights and <laughs> twanging bows and arrows is not quite the same thing as lumberjacking. Yeah, I'm going to be lifting up the tunic of Caterell's clothes to see if he's indeed wearing tights. It's, it's leather. I can help you move I, I'm, something I'm if you like. Leather. Okay, he says, hmm. The girl there looks like she is more robust than you. Hey. Uh, I mean, true. But well, hey. come in, come in. Don't just stand there letting the cold out. Or the cold in. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Be respectful of the AC. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just looking. I'm looking at Central my stats. Central air is escaping. Okay. I'm looking at my stats, and his insults are right, so it hurts. <laughs> <laughs> so he invites you in. He shuts the ill-fitting door, um, and basically the the back chamber where you you know you knocked on. It looks like a. It's kind of like a, a workshop. Um, he has got large logs that he's been sawing into about foot and a half lengths. Um, and he has a big kind of iron stove that he is clearly, like, stuffing to make sure it is constantly at maximum level. Like, it's flaming in there, like, blazing. There's no subtle <laughs> smolder there. It's a roaring fire inside. He says, There. There's a wood. There's a saw. Come on. I'm going to start sawing the wood. No, I cannot that, believe I that you come here just to help me cut my logs into small, neat, tidy piles. So no doubt you want something, don't you? So spit it out. What is it you want? There is a chaos artifact we've been tasked with destroying. It is currently in the hands of Conrad Messner. We need to prove that we know how to destroy it before he'll let us have our hands on it, which is, again, a very... Wise thing I ever. have told people before, the fleshless made, the fleshless made flesh ritual, is not to be taken lightly. It's uh, the but of your which one of you wishes to um, <laughs> be the vessel? 
Have you discussed that even? Wait, what? I'm sorry. What? What does this ritual do? What? How does it work? I would assume that that's why you were sent to me. You're asking about destroying. But you, you have a way of destroying said artifact. Absolutely. It is a ritual known as the fleshless made flesh. So what? It like makes the daemon meaty. Uh, in a manner of speaking. It sounds like it gets. Transfigured into a person. Oh, person. see, now you are much and smarter then you, than you, you look! Well, don't, don't say transfigured, Katara. We're not going down that road again. No, no, you'll see what the ritual does. Upon casting of the ritual, it draws the demonic entity from inside the item and deposits it into a willing host. At which point, we dispatch the host. And the chaos entity dies along with it. Willing host? Oh yes, you have to be willing. Doesn't work if they're not willing. They will not choose to fight against the chaos entity's will, you see. If they're not willing, they will um, not want it to be there, therefore it will escape. But if you are willing, then you can utilize the efforts of your will to maintain it and keep it installed inside yourself. And then we complete the ritual, kill you, um, and of course there's a horrible side effect is it leaves the uh, willing victim dead. But such is life, or death, as it were. That is a fact of death. And if it's willing, that's not the end of the world. Yes, the big problem is... During the ritual, between the times that the person is possessed by the entity and the time it takes to complete the ritual and slay them, or sacrifice them, they can become quite dangerous as they are slowly filled with the formidable power of the entity within them. So as a general rule of thumb, you need an extra few people around to keep it entertained. Hold it at bay, as it were. Mm-hmm. Why couldn't you just restrain them before chance wearing the entity? Oh, and that is typically what we try to do, but um, several times uh, restraints are uh, broken. Depends on the power of the entity. Um, sometimes they can be uh, incredibly strong. What if they were weakened beforehand? Well, you see, once they are possessed, it is not their strengths. It is the strengths of the entity that matters. Mm. And if this is a very dangerous and powerful artifact, uh, the chances are that the entity inside of it is also equally as strong and powerful. As I said, it is not to be taken lightly, but um, it is a surefire way to destroy an artifact. Sure fire. That's the, I'm not saying it is the I only have. way. It is just, <laughs> it is just the way that I know. I tend not to spend a whole lot of time here in the city, and I keep myself to myself. So I don't really know of anybody else that might know of another way to destroy it. Other than Dita Klempfer, and if you've already spoken to him, well then. Um, Well, the only she's... other person that I do know that might be able to help you, I have an acquaintance. Um, he is a local lord here in town. Knows a lot of people. And, and he is? That be Lord Frederick. Ah, yes, you've met him. Yes, yes he's <laughs> a, a, great, a great ally who's been with us on many, many journeys. <laughs> In his words. So, so, um, hmm. but, uh, I am a strong proponent of destroying of all things chaos, so if you need me to help you with the ritual, I will do so. After all, it is what we should all do. So do you have this item with you? Do you have this chaos artifact? No, we needed to hear what you just said before we could convince, uh, Conrad Messner to... Part with it. Oh, isn't he something to do with the Light College? I've heard that name. 
Yes. Um, yes, yes, he's very much something to do with the Light College. He, he, he basically said we could not procure the item until we know how to destroy it, because he wouldn't trust us to just take it from him oh, and have it be out Well, at world. least he has some common sense. That's what I was saying. Uh, but if you tell him that um, you have spoken to a master wizard of the um, Jade College... And that I am familiar with the ritual of the fleshless made flesh, then um, perhaps he will entrust you with the artifact. Um, all you have to decide is which one of you wants to uh, step in the pentagram, as it were. <laughs> <laughs> but don't worry, it's quite painful. <laughs> <laughs> This has been enlightening. It's much to consider, but it's better than we have been told by a sort of fellow that um, he had a way of which he could dispose of the item and it, what did he call the spell? The Transfiguration of Resplendent Glory. Hmm. A bright wizard told us that. I am not... This is what you went to see the wizard for? I'm not familiar with that particular ritual, but then if it is a bright ritual, uh, perhaps it engulfs it in flames and burns the uh, entity to death. Well, well, transfiguration is what throws me off, because that's not necessarily destruction. No, I mean, perhaps... yours seems more like true transfiguration, you know. Hmm? Well, ours just pulls the entity from the item and puts it into a willing receptacle. As you cannot destroy the item with the creature in it, you put the creature in something much more destroyable. I see. Well, it just it, it just didn't sit well with me, the name of the ritual, and also the fact that he had several magical items of rare and powerful natures. Well, most wizards of any resound do. The amulet of Sekathar and the gloves of Jarfrit. It, but, which was apparently stolen a hundred years ago. Memory serves history. Uh, uh, did he look like he was a hundred years old? No. Which then is he what scared me didn't about steal him. him. Did he? Uh, but <laughs> it, it tells me that he's power hungry, and your ritual would probably arouse him. Yeah, if you think about it to me. Uh, yes. As I said, um, but just bear in mind, um, the ritual takes about two hours to complete. During that time, um, there will inevitably be a point where the entity will probably attempt to break free, and if it succeeds, then um, we must confine it to the room that it is in, and sometimes that means several people have to uh, cause a distraction. And sometimes those people don't live. Because it kills them, rips them to pieces. I never said destroying chaos artifact was easy. I just happen to know a way to do it. I don't. I don't suppose any of us thought it would be easy. Um, but it is. We we certainly have a lot to consider. Um, how long do you anticipate before your next? I'm working on something. It'll probably take me just over a week, maybe eight to ten days. We don't quite have a week, so that's perfect. I'll still be here then. Excellent. Then we will seek out your company once again. Is there anything we should bring you <laughs> while we're out and about? Um, let me think you should bring me. Just as a thanks for your time, as you know. Um, if you could seek out an apothecary and acquire some mandrake roots, that would be useful. At some point, I've got to go out and get some, but if you bring it to me, that would uh, mean I don't have to leave and can continue to stoke the flames, as it were. I have to have a certain amount of charcoal for this particular ritual that I'm working on, and, um... Well, the only real good way to get it is to burn an awful lot of wood. 
Chuck on and wooden ash. I think I have enough wood, but I do need some uh, mantric root. All right. Hmm. Oh. Oh. Nope, good I think know. that's it. <laughs> well, good luck, and if you do decide you want to uh, deal with the rituals, then um, all you have to do is decide who is best to be the vessel and who is best to help combat them and keep them at bay. While I do the rest of the things that I have to do. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I guess gonna... we'll leave, yeah. Yeah, we'll be deep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, well, what do you want to do now? <laughs> <laughs> So you encountered a bright wizard that that, <laughs> that that probably would have tried to steal the artifact. Yeah, no, that's exactly what happened. And um, I, I didn't. We didn't want to talk about it because it was just a frustrating endeavor all around. That person should not oh, be out walking around. <laughs> right, but he also had a lot of very strong uh, magical items and a bunch of people looking at us weird, so we just wanted to get out of there and say, like, maybe we'll be in contact, but probably not. <laughs> this You'll never is, see us this, again. <laughs> this feels like a future problem that's going to end up coming back. <laughs> well, it did. I mean, which is why I kept reacting so vehemently to your talking about fire. <laughs> Being a bright wizard of fire. Fire! Does he, fire! Does he know about the artifact? Oh, yeah. Oh, good. You you told him about the artifact. <laughs> no, no, no well, he just knew of an artifact. He knew. He was, a part, of, he was a part of the people who came to town before. The adventures. That old Eldet, who's very quiet, <laughs> tracks him down. Right, Odette? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, see, see. Um, okay, I'm going to put a pin in that. Do you know where he was going? On a boat? Yeah, just that he was leaving. He, I think he wanted to make it seem like a limited time offer. It seemed altogether like a grift. Just didn't feel right. Yeah. Well, we kind of wished you would come with us, Bertilda, but you were doing your thing. <laughs> okay, I, I didn't know that you were going to meet a potentially dangerous person down by the docks. But we survived. It's okay. He's living in a van down by the river. This time. <laughs> next time, I would very much appreciate if you were there. And uh, I understand there's this odd fissure between... And you don't feel you're respected... Just know that you are, um... <laughs> oh, I'm bad at this. Oh, yeah, that did come out right. <laughs> Caterell! <sighs> you really do have to kind of mend this thing between all four of us. If we're going to carry out what it sounds like we have to do. <laughs> uh, then it probably won't matter. <laughs> Why wouldn't it matter? We still have a uh, masochistic uh, priestess of Sigma to speak to, and she might be willing to stand in the proverbial pentagram. You would really be willing to ask someone outside of our group to do that? Well, she's very resolute against chaos and very resolute in hurting herself from the rumors, so this seems like a perfect fit. Wait, who are we talking about? I think he's talking about the priestess of Sigmar. I still want to let it be known that I feel very weird asking someone, hey, you want to die for a good cause? Um, <laughs> none of us want to do it. So, yeah. Um, oh, I, I yeah, never said I mean, none of us. Recruiters are... do it in high schools. We can do it just this once. I don't know. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, high schools. Look, who's to say that all of us don't want to do it? I mean, we all have a reason to do it. Because it's going to happen anyway. <laughs> like, what's the problem? Just happens a little earlier for someone. It's not the worst idea in the world. Do it! See, here's the thing. If Just you're not absolutely willing, the ritual might not work. Well, they'd be willing. I mean, you know. Can you say you're completely willing? 
Well, I have to spread the message of everyone else's doom and gloom. <laughs> so that's so you saying you're not willing. I mean, I'm the guy on the street with the sign, letting people know that they're all destined to die a horrible kind of pottery <laughs> death. <laughs> Mikey. Well, that's really right. Well, it's not that I'm against the idea of being the sacrificial lamb. I just think it would kind of be a waste of my purpose of <laughs> proselytization. That's so what I you, do. you're not 100% willing. <laughs> well, if it came down to it, I happily would in Ulrich's name. You're making an awful lot of an argument right now <laughs> for being someone oh, who's willing. <laughs> I'm just saying there are so many people in this world who would probably be more than willing. Look, we, we could get like. A, you know, uh, a down on his luck father with the what? promise of paying his family for his what? sacrifice. You know, what is wrong and with then we insurance? inform him of everything. A yeah, down maybe. on his luck. Okay, when you said the word father, what? Sure, why not? And and there was argument against me using chaos to defeat chaos, and you're talking about sacrificing a father. Because he wants to help his family. It's like, hey, Luke, we should save your family yep. by yeah, paying them money. If you sacrifice yourselves, uh, they'll I'm, be I'm sorry. well perhaps, and bred until they die later perhaps, on. Perhaps I can clarify. He's both an elf, so he has an <laughs> ego and thinks he's immortal, and he's a wizard of death. So he has a really interesting relationship with that. <laughs> Anything he suggests is going to be a little bit... Morbid. <laughs> it's not morbid. It's just neutral. Look, no, everyone. It's morbid. It's not neutral. No, we're all we're gonna die. Role play. <laughs> He's working on a children's book. Instead of everybody poops, it's called everybody dies. <laughs> the award-winning sequel to everybody poops. Yes, yes. <laughs> Look, Johnny's not feeling well. Johnny's not long for this world. <laughs> It's okay, though. Everybody dies. Johnny has chronic illness. It's okay, though. Everybody dies. Term page. That would be so successful, it's gross. From the moment you're born. <laughs> From the moment you're born, you start a journey. It's a journey towards death. Like, if, we, if we had this Some of us out, arrive I would it. sooner than others. We'll get and it. We'll that's get okay. Penguin. Like, that'll be the title. Like, everybody dies, and that's okay. But don't worry, Johnny can be a donor and pass all of his organs on and, can, and live on the through last, others. The last, the last thing is, and that's okay, it's just like, everybody <laughs> dies. Just learn to deal with it. <laughs> I think we just wrote the most disturbing and morbid kids book ever. Good job, guys. do it, though. One, of the, thing, out, one of the things you have to look forward to is your mommy and daddy will probably die before you do. <laughs> <laughs> leaving you all you alone. You will survive your parents, hopefully. If not, it's okay. Everybody dies. Are you a pet lover? Know that you will lose many pets in your lifetime. Oh, oh, None of them will live as long as you. Oh, yeah. oh, 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 <laughs> invest in a turtle or a bird. All right, now you're making me feel really <laughs> shitty. <laughs> Know the life expectancy of your pets. Yeah. God. Prepare yourself ahead of time, but live in the moment. Yeah. Mm. Okay, you depressed now. <laughs> Damn, let's go. Hey, Johnny, it might be, be too to... soon, but she said it, so it's okay. Yeah, you gotta let's be go able to uh, let's you gotta go be able to laugh. Priestess. You gotta yeah. be able to yeah. laugh. That's hey, right. Hey, yeah, let's go kind of priestess into killing yourself. Let's, you know, let's go. <laughs> is, that, is that what you want to do now? You want to go We're and going see to Clara? Clara yeah. Okay. Clara, yeah. And to see where she stands on all of it. All right. Well, we can even come to her and be like, it's really sad. We have a hard choice ahead of us. <laughs> Finding a priestess of Sigmar is not as hard as it is to find certain other people. Um, and. You can find Clara Roban very easily. Reverend Clara Roban, um, who is an anointed priestess of Sigmar. Um, like most people, she's happy to see you, um, or most priestesses. Uh, she has like a, you know, white cowl with a, a headband on with a um, side of the comet embossed on a circlet in the center, wearing all her robes of regalia. Um, she is a very stern faced looking woman as she approaches you and very stoically says 
Blessings of Sigma on you, brothers and sister. <laughs> As she kind of like looks down and catches a secondary glimpse of old debt down there. Thank, thank you for meeting with us on such short notice. And what could the grace of the comet provide you on this day? Um, guidance, perhaps. Ah, uh, yes, I, I, many I check, come to the pin, priesthood of Sigma for switch. guidance. <laughs> okay. Um, Make sure that it's uh, the Sigmarian one. She nods approvi- approvingly. <laughs> Blessings of Sigma upon you. Blessed Sigma. <laughs> <laughs> what can I do for you? <laughs> Her voice just changes. To, um, what is happening? <laughs> <laughs> Game reference. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm distracted. Well, we've been tasked with the destruction of um, a certain chaos artifact. A righteous cause, to be sure. Yes, um, we've just learned, um, well, to catch you up, Conrad Messner of the Bright College has it, is not willing to give it to us unless we can prove our metal and that we know how to destroy it. We just learned how to destroy it and it involves, um, I guess, transferring the evil from the device to a willing host and dispatching the host. And... Well, it has us a bit broken up. <laughs> hmm. Did you discover this by consulting with an amethyst wizard? We, uh, we did. Maybe? I mean, I am an amethyst wizard myself. Well, not an amethyst wizard, no. Um, it was. And, well, I learned it of it wizard. with these guys, and we consulted yeah. each other, so by proxy they found out from an amethyst wizard. That would be me. Interesting. Only I heard that a ritual to destroy blasphemous artifacts was recently discovered by an amethyst wizard. I don't remember the name. Um, although I do believe I ministered to her once. I think it was her under those robes. Oh. Warrior companions were with her. Um, then they went off to help some dwarves in some mountain. Sorry, I have no idea where the warrior is now. Um... I do recall the wizard wasn't going with them, though, so perhaps they're still here in the town. It's an amethyst hmm. wizard, not a bright wizard. No. And not a jade wizard. I'm going to turn and look no. at the others. <laughs> huh. No fish? Well. Wait, what? Go, go fish? What's that mean? You know, the card game where you, you have the different color wizards. <laughs> Does that exist in this world? <laughs> People yeah, the go fish? Co- the it's called color, Magic the, the Gathering. The <laughs> <laughs> magic, magic the fishing net. <laughs> Go tap the amethyst wizard and see what so, you get out of it. <laughs> okay, yes, so, so I, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, miss. We have spoken to several wizards of different colleges. And one of the Bright Wizard College... And one of the Jade both suggested ways to destroy this artifact. And now you're saying there's also a third option, the Amethysts? So I have. My, my college? I can't confirm this, only I heard rumors. It was suggested to me that should we need something of blasphemous origin destroyed... That there was indeed an amethyst wizard that had recently come across a ritual to do so. A third option. What are the odds that one discovered by an amethyst wizard wouldn't involve somebody dying? I'm going to look at Matthew Rain. <laughs> Very slim, but we that's what the jade wizard wanted to do, so... Best to check. Um, maybe, maybe the amethyst wizard doesn't have to. Uh, ritual doesn't require someone willing. It could just be we could get a bad person. Someone you force unwilling. to do it. Well, if they're bad and unwilling, two Who birds, one stone. It is unlikely bad. that somebody vile and wicked would be a suitable sacrifice for the destruction of the forces of chaos. 
So so you can't fight chaos with chaos? I'm going to look up Bertilda as I ask the question, <laughs> kind of slightly. I would say that while it might be possible to overcome one form of chaos with another, you are still left with chaos at the end of the day. Not if they destroy each other. And we kill whoever survives. That's, that's where I was going. I prefer the methodology of killing all things chaos initially and being done with it. It is more of a finite solution and less risky. So would you be willing? Jesus. Who is this person? <laughs> Just saying. Unfortunately, my duties here at the church are rather, um, cumbersome, should I say. I am bound here. I do not get to go off and venture forth to hunt down the forces of chaos like I did in my youth. Um, but for that, I do have acquaintances. After all... So she's not willing, because she has other duties. This sounds familiar. Who just told us this? <laughs> Well, who are the other acquaintances? I'm just curious. Members of the Order of the Witch Hunters, Gotri Hammerfist and Theodora uh -huh. Ferrig. They have both oh. fought hard against chaos over the years. You might consult with them. Their information is likely to be useful. I mean, I was going to consider that we could kill two birds with one stone if you could get Gotri to be willing, but, you know, that's... <laughs> Well, here's here's the thing. Um, I was thinking about that. <laughs> so so Gotrig, we did meet with Gotrig, and he very much wanted to kill my companion and myself for no reason whatsoever. Oh no, he had. A oh, I'm sure he had his one. reasons. I'm sure. <laughs> yes, and they had to do with our. Um, did you perhaps do anything chaosy around him? No, they no were we're just elves. We're, we're just the elves. The elves. They just exist. Uh, just, well, some dwarves. Just a racist some dwarves still you. still hold deep prejudices, as do some elves. I'm sure you know. Hmm. Oh. Uh, I'm sure he was kidding. He wouldn't have killed you. I, I kind uh, of feel like he might have. I don't know. It's scary shit, man. Uh, <laughs> I thought I was gonna have to. <laughs> but Theodora, we like her. She's great. Yes, she has been a. Hardened warrior. She has not fared as well as some of the other warriors against chaos, but um, she is made of stern stuff, to be sure. Well, so Gotrig uh, is having issues with uh, with Mesner, who supposedly has the artifact in question that we need to get destroyed. <laughs> mm. Well. I feel fairly sure that um, Herr Mesner is quite also a strong proponent against chaos. After all, he is a wizard lord of the Light College. Um, one of their very finest. Uh, so is, is there a way we could get Gotrig to stand down on his... Which hunter he Well, what, ev what, what evidence does Gotrig have? What, what re reasons does he have? He must have some. He has none that he proposed other than is very suspicious that he has so many chaos artifacts. Again. Well, of course he does. He's a member of the White, that's, the Light College. That's, that's the problem. That's yes. what we suggested. And he said, do you really believe that? And it <sighs> turned into something. Turned I'm into afraid, what, precisely? Uh, a sputtering of nonsense? Nonsense. I, I, think uh, they call it, I think they call it conspiracy theories. Hmm. Mm. Concerns me of the lasting health of the mind. It is if, if concerning. We get, if we could get Gotrig to stand down, Mesner will then be more willing to part with the items to get them destroyed. You see, you see, that's one of the two conditions we have in order to acquire the artifact to destroy it. It's to the point where Gotrig suggested we set up a trap to spring and kill Conrad Messner alongside him. So he is um, already plotting to kill Mesner. Yes. Are you convinced he has no evidence, or perhaps he just didn't tell you of this evidence? Maybe he knows I'm, something that he didn't let on. He very much did not let on any evidence whatsoever, let alone any argument sufficient 
to be considered an argument against Masnur. The argument he made was, I'm a witch hunter and I've been doing this for a really long time. And I have a basically hunch. a just trust me. Um, okay, do me a favor, if you will. No. Okay, <laughs> but not you, not you. Okay. Um, Collective but success. other people. Sure. <laughs> um, yeah, but his evidence was, it's obvious. Yeah. <laughs> Clearly he must be. I feel it in my bones. <laughs> He has an um, insanity. They're gonna lobotomize him. Right. I just don't I don't trust anybody's opinion because everybody thought that the deputy high priest was good too. So <laughs> they all have agendas. <laughs> um That's what you learn watching White Christmas. They've all got an angle. Right. Everybody's like, Red <laughs> Mesner's not evil. He works for the Light College. And it's like, yeah, this guy was a deputy high priest of a temple of Ulrich. But, yeah, but, but Spook, do you really think the authors of this campaign would have it happen twice? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, they would. No, I don't buy it. They do it I would totally do it. Would, of they do it so many times in a be, row. I feel like players would be like, oh, it's never going to happen again. They, no. they considered publishing a fourth adventure, and then somebody in the room said, Hey, I know we just finished the fourth adventure, but reading it over, it, it does use a lot of the same words as the first adventure. <laughs> and the second adventure, and the third adventure. Well, right. see, here's the thing. So after the, the, the first got one, right, again. now we don't know who to trust. Hmm. Spook, I just want to remind... Can I just remind you of the Vizier Tadros? You guys were, like, all against him in that in that campaign. I like what you guy. Said, you're like in that campaign. I still don't trust him. <laughs> <laughs> he has an agenda, clearly. <laughs> um, oh, I gotta Where's it. a good old fashioned B boy when you need him? I need a beach him. <laughs> Someone I can trust. Yeah. Someone I can trust for at least 47 episodes and only to get <laughs> fucked over on the 48. That's all right. Um, okay, so... I love that. Beach him! <laughs> yeah! Beach him! I like how you're like, I would never yeah, have calling it again. Cards. Uh, y'all give me a perception <laughs> check. I'm um, that It would never happen again. I need a Forget perception or... check, and it would be, um, visually based. So if you have any bonuses for vision, you could apply them. Oh. I have ears. <laughs> we have excellent yeah. vision too. Oh yeah, we do. We have plus God. God dang. I'm gonna re-roll that. Okay. Yeah, you've got a you've got a full a full complement of fortune points today. Son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious? Oh my God! I still failed. Oh, but Caterell got it. Okay. I got it. First try. Are you serious? Roll twenty. Okay, Caterell. Um, you definitely pick up. From some of her facial expressions, as you're talking about maybe Gotrix not not quite all there and this, that, and the other, you kind of get the sense that this is not the first time that this has crossed her mind. Maybe she's heard that before. Maybe she's got her own suspicions. But she definitely seems to get very awkward when like, she's looking at the floor and... Uh, Toying with, you know, the back of her, trying to straighten out her headdress and stuff like that when you're talking about those sort of things. Something just feels a little <laughs> iffy with that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of press a little bit, respectfully, but like, you know. Um, <laughs> what has, you doing? <laughs> has, yeah, pardon my ass. Stop picking at it. <laughs> has has Gotri been causing much stir as of late. Um, no, no, not really. Um, it just seems um, even Theodora had doubts as to his well-being when we asked her about him. Hmm, well, I do think it's a little rash of him to be planning to kill a wizard lord of the light college and for certain it would cause 
significant uproar between the Church of Sigma and the Bright Co and the Light College. We cannot allow that for certain. Um. You think he could do it? No, but I think yeah, he's quite capable of believing he can. And under the right circumstances, it's not altogether unfeasible that he could succeed. After all, he is a incredibly dangerous combatant. Um, if he got the drop on Herr Mesner um, in a dark alley somewhere and wasn't seen coming, a uh, couple of quick s sharp flashes of that axe of his, it could be... So you mean like if a group of adventurers were to help him in a bush, <laughs> that it might... I'm not going to say that. So, so, oh, you're not going to say that? Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh... Do you actually think he would go through with it? He requested he our aid. We are to meet with him again to discuss as to whether or not we are helping him with his plan to kill Conrad Messner on his terms. I am also pretty sure that if we were to help him and go through with it, Caterella and myself would probably be dispatched after the job. Casualties, uh, accidental, uh, accidental. No, you won't. <laughs> accidental. Um, <sighs> collateral. This is indeed very worrying and concerning. I must confess, <sighs> having a borderline psychopathic witch hunter with paranoid tendencies doesn't look good for the Church of Sigma. After all, our witch hunters have a difficult enough time maintaining some form of decorum as it is due to the nature of their actual jobs. But we we had acquaintances in Middenheim who were Viola, witch hunters of Sigmar. Viola Fidelis. We He's worked quite, quite closely with them. He's quite more gung-ho than the um, other They were hunters. intense. Gotri Hammerfist does not belong to such order. Um, no. His methods are too rough. Oh, he's the one that that kills first and asks questions later. Got it. Well, most witch hunters do that, but he does at least tend to... Most of them at least do tend to point themselves in approximately the right direction. My concern is that... Gotri Hammerfist might have become possessed with chasing something down that is um in the wrong direction. Mm. If I was to know for sure that he was uh, fraying around the mental capacities, I'd have no uh, no choice but to pull him off the streets. Well, who who is over the the witch hunters? Well, um us at the Semple of Sigmar, I am a uh, reverend. I myself would have the ability to as I said, call him in. Um I mean if he had this Roof, wouldn't he give it to you or tell you about it? He might not would to us because I mean he had just met us. Well, why they operate under our umbrella? They don't tend to take direction directly from us, if that makes sense. Ah, uh, unless of course we happen to have information, in which case we can use them, such as a sharp stabbing arrow. Fire them off to dispatch things of wicked nature, but, um... What if you told him that you had heard something and you want to know what he has? Because he might need help? I mean, I know that he probably thinks very highly of himself, but... Mesner is... Mesner. <laughs> yeah. No, no, um... My fear is that if I was to approach him and ask questions without any kind of reverent proof he is more likely to well dare I say it throw me off the scent or lie um, if he is that convinced that Mesner is guilty of chaos worship and to the point where he is plotting an immediate attack on him and willing to recruit virtual strangers to do it it seems he's also become rather reckless in his methods as well, which makes me believe even more that perhaps his 
good judgment is somewhat marred. Did you say you had an appointment with him? You were meeting him? We were supposed to return to him with our answer on what to when? do in our plan. We didn't specify a date. We just, within the next few days. This and was where were you to go to meet him? At his house. That jail death-looking place on the other side of town. I see. Um, fine. fine. Fetch my cloak! Well... <laughs> 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 I think it is pertinent that I accompany you and um, see if I cannot quietly eavesdrop the conversation and make a decision for myself if he is indeed become a loose cannon then um, I may have to uh, restrain him and bring him under the under the yoke of the Temple of Sigmar until such time, of course, that we have purged his mind of any maladies. How would you uh, listen in secretively? We Nothing. get checked at the door. Oh, you just like show up with us. No, no, I'll just, when we get there, you'll uh, get him to have a conversation in an outside room, and I'll, quite honestly, stand outside and eavesdrop the entire thing. All of his windows are barred and shut. I see. We might need to summon him to a more public location. Well, he wouldn't leave his place. It's he's... fortified. Let me try that again. You can purge his mind of maladies? Um, over a long, arduous process. How long and arduous? I'm going to look at him out of Matthew. Depends <laughs> on how, how <laughs> depraved he has become. Let's say it's one depraved. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, on a scale of one to ten, if he's about a one or a two. It says, well, it is different for everybody. Someone as strong-willed as a witch hunter may take weeks of therapy. What? What? Why are you looking hey, Matt, at me? Hey, Matthew Bain. Why are you help. looking at me? That's no. time. Why? What? You've never high fived me before. What's going on? It's fine. High five. No, I don't. What? What is going on? Is this an all record? Or record? Give me a high five. <laughs> 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 because you are the voice of Ulrich, I'm gonna high five you without. Okay. Okay. Well, his his will's not that strong. So, do you think you could take a look at our friend Matthew Payne here? <laughs> 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 I am not Gotrig. Are you I am, suffering? I am are you suffering from a dismemberment of the mind, my son? Yes. My mind is very <laughs> membered. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, as of late, he's been obsessed with flogging himself and smelling like utter excrement. Um, and oh, not this again! The harbinger of. The good news that all will soon come to an end, and We're all in Ulrich's die. name, we soon. need to do our. How part. is anything I just said not? How is any of that not true? See what I mean. Are you sure he's not just depressed? <laughs> I'm not. It was like a 180. Like... I mean, he's quite the opposite of depressed. It's like when you see someone depressed, and then suddenly they gain hope. That's a sign. He's, like, excited about being depressed. Does that make sense? Normally, he's just a little bit gloomy. Um, but well, if you are... If you are of aid to us in uh, putting to rest one of our problems, I'm sure we could find time and energy and room to assist him of purging any that that ailments. That would be great, because There's on the scale... To on a scale of one to ten, about how annoying he he is, he used to be about a three, and now he's definitely like a nine. <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh... Oh, three. That's very flattering, you know. And and what is Catarell? Oh, don't. No, God. <laughs> okay, Catarell has been pretty consistent with his personality. He didn't start off one way and then and one fell swoop was just suddenly another. Like, he didn't start spouting 
Oh, and oh we have a God. vote of inspiration. <laughs> For what? <laughs> for proving you had a weak will. <laughs> for for I think for seizing seizing the opportunity of maybe getting your brain seen to. <laughs> yeah, really well, I'm saying no. I don't believe. So you're this. the no. You're the one. <laughs> I'm the one. <laughs> that was excellent. That was so good. <laughs> yep. Uh, and while there is not technically inspiration in Warhammer, how it works is you basically get a free, um, free fortune point to spend at your leisure. So I was it... so happy that worked. <laughs> so, so, so that works, and she gets inspiration, and I do the everybody dies book, and that causes a, a huge no, conversation amongst the party, it, and I get it. nothing. I see no, how it see, works. No, the, that wasn't no, in game though. Think of it as like you're usually you're usually at like that was random seven, bollocks. And we expect this of you. <laughs> <laughs> yep. You were arguing against it. All it took was me going, "Give me a high five!" And then you. <laughs> yeah, of course I'm gonna high five you. You're you're my prophets in this world of my insane of Matthew Do you see insanity. what I mean? He's insane. No, I know. He's well, insane. I, it looks like the vote. It looks like the vote's carried. So uh, you can have an extra extra fortune point to spend, Spook. So the next fortune point you spend. <laughs> Don't have to take one off. It's a freebie. Yay. Well, well, Beta, I also suggest we sacrifice a father by the insurance policy. That's inspiring, too. He is arguing my point. I really really hope everyone knows that I am not Matthew Bain. This is not Shaggit talking. This is my character. Shaggit's very sane, okay? (laughs) <laughs> He's definitely not like, very sane. Ah, well, I have a solution for this. I have a okay. solution. Life insurance fraud. <laughs> so yeah, so Clara Roban basically she's gonna she wants to accompany you, loiter okay. outside, eavesdrop at a, a window, and um, see if she believes that he is indeed a little bit over the top. Sure, we were, we will go there and do. Okay. Well, let the elves walk in the room and see if he tries to commit genocide. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, it's a long way to the other end of the city, um, which will put you early afternoon by the time you get to Gutry Hammerfist's pad, um, which is all the way up here. Okay. Uh, so if you remember, his house was like a proverbial fortress. Um, he had got it locked down like Fort Knox. Um when you arrive, she kind of like stays back a little bit and she says, I'll wait until you've gone inside and then I'll make my approach once I feel he is not watching the doors. Oh, don't forget he has like an assistant person. Ah, then be sure to make sure that you keep the assistant entertained at least for a few minutes when you first arrive. We need all debt. <laughs> you have all debt. You're just responsible for planner. <laughs> we need that. <laughs> um, go to respects uh, Matilda the most. I was just thinking, she her her first duty is guard. Her second duty is she's technically a maid, I think. So what if you just tromp in there with mud all over your boots? I'd be the least likely to get beheaded. Exactly. <laughs> uh, sure. And then, you know, she would have to deal with that. She would be complaining about us being there again, but we were sent on audience. So, <clears throat> and so basically our plan, just so everyone's clear, is to get him to agree to this plan of murder without any actual proof, like to actually point out what he thinks the proof is right mm. i'm just being so we're clear yeah and which means can... we have to agree with uh, with the idea of an ambush then yes which means we'd have to set one up well, that's... 
We know that he likes to go to the grove, and we know that he already likes to stalk the grove a lot, so... We're not going to be implicated in this, are we? <laughs> Just... we, have, we have a witness. We have a witness. Yeah, Clara, uh, Clara we're not going to get in trouble for this, right? Getting him to profess his... We live in a world where it's not uncanny to say, hey, somebody's going to have to die to do this ritual, by the way. Um, I don't think your implications for this are a main concern. I, I, I just don't want to end up in jail again. <laughs> it's okay. For something I didn't do. <laughs> it's okay, our local witch hunter will be beat to shit and get us out of there. I mean, what does Clara say to all of this? Because we're talking in her presence. Yeah. <laughs> sure. um, she's kind of letting you come up. I mean, she's, she's task, tasked you with doing your part. She's gonna let sure. you do it <laughs> oh god she's gonna oh i don't want to get thrown under the bus okay we could suggest to him to be the willing sacrifice of the flesh made to fleshness right are you are you still on about that <laughs> that's not the we worst could, idea but just, we could know. we could play into his insanity a little bit say well, something like blah blah he's got the wizard keys to the to the bright college like a light college, my bad. Um, they sound so similar, and I just don't think about it. Um, <laughs> so then we could get there, get our artifact, and destroy it. We know a guy to destroy it now. And I just don't know if it's really altogether ethical if he's lost his mind due to chaos to sacrifice his life to chaos, while poetic is kind of... Why am I talking about ethics again? So I don't know. I'm going to start rubbing my feet in my head. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to follow Bertilda's uh, lead here because she's okay. the one wiping her feet, getting them muddy. All right. I mean, we're going to we, want. Um, we we winged it last time. We're going to want Aldette to walk in front of Bertilda to hide the muddy boots at first. Okay. And then we approach the door without Clara and All right. Well, just like last time, um his manservant peers through a small window in the door to uh, to kind of identify who you are before he lets you in. Um he says, "That's you again." If you're hard right there, I will go and see if Ha Hammerfist is in. One moment. Much like last time, you hear him wander off, and a few minutes later, you hear him come back. He opens the door quickly now. Inside. And inside we'll, we go. We'll do that. Okay. We go inside. Um, as you walk inside, you can see Goatry stomping down the hallway eagerly with his axe in hand. Looks like he's ready for business. He says, Good to see you back. So when are we going to take care of this shiny bastard then? Perhaps we should, uh, sorry, sir, uh, we should go to somewhere to sit and converse somewhere. Elf, I think you need to be quiet. Uh, okay. Mommy and daddy are talking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, says, I go silent. <laughs> like, what is that I'll have to talk about? We've already discussed the plan. You're going to lure the bastard into an appropriate place. I'm going to be laying in wait. And I'm going to embed me axe all the way into his cerebral cortex. So that his feet and hands twitch when I pry it loose from his skull. That sounds normal. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go up to Bertilda and whisper in her ear. Get him to say it louder and Slower. I don't like whispering, Elf. None of your pointy-eared tricks. You speak plainly or not at all. We don't all have ears shaped like triangles. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull oh, this so things I want to say right say now. See another fucking word, and I'll bury this bastard axe right in your fucking head first. Why? Maybe. The... No, I'm holding him back. 
<laughs> he just kind of like starts to. You see his hands like twisting around the the shaft of the axe eagerly. I'm gonna step in between them because I'm really afraid. Well, I was, he's gonna I take was a behind swing. you anyway. <laughs> so, sorry. Continue. He says, "Where is? Where are we gonna lure him to? Have you decided?" We're um, thinking that the grove might be yeah. a good place. No, we... entirely too public. We're and there's a lot of those. A lot of those finger whittlers around there sure to leap to his defense no it needs to be somewhere somewhere secluded somewhere where nobody's likely to get involved or come to his aid yeah but see that's going to describe the place where we got jumped (laughs) i think that you should make an example out of him him being dead's example enough when word gets throughout town that a dabbler of magics of the dark arts no matter how high and mighty are held accountable yeah but they're just gonna think you're nuts we don't we want them to know the truth they'll know the truth i mean when chaos activity dies down around altdorf they'll know (laughs) but it would be foolish to try to do it in such a place as the grove where there are so many of his ilk loitering around we'd never succeed after all it'll be a challenge for us as it is let alone dozens of them uh this is as uh apologies um we more meant on the way to the grove uh, from his from his college we believe it's farther north in the same quarter and he has a way he travels specifically um through towards the grove when he visits um Mm. i would suggest after a long day of his studies he would be probably the least on guard on his return back home she's right we did get jumped there and nobody seemed to care nobody cares when you get jumped there Mm. there's some logic to that thought process and it is indeed true in and around that area there are some right shitholes and uh, I, with all the skullduggery that already goes on there, people heard a yell and a cry in the dark. They're not likely to get involved or call the constabulary. Right, hmm. and that's the thing, is his passage is under the city, which is why nobody knows where the bright college is, or the light college is. You'll see his cohorts uh, or want to be cohorts wandering around waving their fingers at buildings overhead right when when he's killed don't you think people will, will suspect you once he's dead i don't care what they suspect i'm a witch hunter anybody that thinking. rushes to his anybody that rushes to his defense by default will be declaring themselves a chaos sympathizer and worshiper and we'll just take care of them as well. And picture it now, can't we? Aye. No, well, there's some truth. The lower class areas are uh, probably the right way. And you're right. This college is supposedly over there in the northeast corner of that district. And the grove being to the southwest. He would have to either walk along the docks or cut a swathed path through the slums. Does all that smoke? I don't (laughs) think so. (laughs) He says, hmm. Well, all we have to do then is decide what side street, and then you just have to decide how to make sure he goes down there. He is a smug bastard. How are we going to convince him to do this? Perhaps we should head over there now and scope out the area. That might be a good idea. What time is it? Um, it was mid afternoon when you got over to here, so. That's what I basically said. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> we don't want to make sure that we're not really seen. We don't want it to get around that we're scoping out this area. I know you're not trying to quote unquote get away with this. Well, no, we're just trying to make sure that we don't don't have any 
incidental bystanders get accidentally caught up in the fray. Ah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, sure. Sure. And if we don't stop, as long as we just walk casually through the slums, most people won't bat an eyelid. And those that do will probably just want to rob us. And those that want to rob us will think twice about it when they see me. So, um... Ah, just, uh... We'll have a wander, a stroll, like. And then when you see an appropriate place, or when we see an appropriate place, we'll mark it. Aye. This guy's insane. <laughs> <laughs> right, come on then. Let's hurry up and go over there, and that way we can scope the place out and have him done tonight. All right, let's get <laughs> moving. No sense in dragging it out. <laughs> Okay, with that, he opens the door. We're going toward the door! <laughs> um, and then you hear... Oh! Uh, it startled me. Uh, your reverence? Um, what, what a surprise! At that point, you hear Clara Roban. She says, I think we need to talk, Gautry. Uh, well, we, we, we were just off out. I'll drop by the temple later on this evening. No, I think we need to talk now. I'm we sorry, who, who is this Mr. Hammerfist? Oh, um, <laughs> local <laughs> priestess from Up Temple. Oh, uh, Reverend nice of to meet Sigma. You. Oh, oh, yeah. yes, um, well, uh, your reverence, um, uh, I have a couple of minutes. She says, we can either discuss it here behind your closed doors. Nice or we can head to the temple <laughs> and have the discussion there. Oh, well, um... Uh, do you mind? Give give me and the Reverend a few minutes. Uh, she oh. won't be long, I'm sure. And then uh, once she leaves, we'll, um... Head off out to lunch. Uh, dinner. Supper, as it were. As we discussed. Yes, that's it. Uh, this sounds good. We'll We'll scope out a few places. Oh, no, just, just wait there. outside. I won't be long. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that was good. Shuffle she, outside. She just kind of, like, raises an eyebrow and looks at you as much to say, yeah, whatever, I'm not going to blow your cover. Um, and if you're all going to walk out, then she goes in and shuts the door. Oh, I go right to the door to listen. <laughs> <laughs> get, a, get, like, a nice glass, put okay. it against the door. You know? uh, well, oh, but you, you got your triangle shaped You will ears, hear you them fine. walking <laughs> down the hallway. The last thing you hear is, not in the hallway. We need to find somewhere more private. This is a delicate, delicate matter. We definitely uh, need right, to hear what um, she's going to say. So <laughs> do, uh, do either of you have... <laughs> something to help with this because I want to make sure she's not <laughs> screwing us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What do you got, butter boy? <laughs> you got a spell or something? I do not, unfortunately. That's uh... not his forte. Oh, what? You mean to tell me a wizard of the death college doesn't have something for him to be able to hear better? Something like clairvoyant based? No. <laughs> if only, oh, if well. only you had a light college person around. <laughs> it's, it's almost like you're completely useless. <laughs> hey. Whoa, that's um, mean. I'm teasing. You're just useless in this situation. You're just mostly useless. <laughs> true. I am absolutely useless. Who's, if it makes you feel the, any better, so am I. Who's um, the lightest on their feet? I say no one though, to me. <laughs> well, yeah. it's you were all dead, right? Like, yeah, I'm at a 55 agility. I don't know. It's the silent. Well, so, Gore, when you described this house, you said it was like a sheer jail, basically, right? Uh, all the windows are all of the windows and doors are not only shuttered but barred as well. Yes. Is there an oh, no, easy way to climb up the building? Uh, you could probably climb up onto the, you know, up onto the higher floors in the roof or something if you was a good clamberer. Yeah. Maybe but I mean, wish. that's only going to get you, you know, to the upper floors. Be careful to look out for. There's no easier way there. in up there unless you're going to play Santa Claus and drop down the chimney. Well, there have, you go, the chimney. He could have <laughs> wards like uh, Theodora had. So, 
Um, I have a pretty good silent move, so I'd probably be the most likely to get up there and listen. I feel um, like that's a... Yeah, I'm, I'm concerned for her safety. Okay. Then, uh... If, if be you, like a Santa you, Claus, right? Like... If you plan on trying to get up on the roof, the first thing I need is a scale share surface roll. Oh, um, there okay. are handholds and I mean, stuff we, like that, so, uh, give me a plus ten. Sorry? Yeah, because we went through the... So we went through the vestibule, yeah? We're, like, on the outside? Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, it was an agility... So you'll get a plus one? ten, because it's not quite as... It's not a complete sheer surface, it's... There are areas to... Footholds and stuff like that will, that will assist. Can we give it an extra boost? Is it straight agility there? With no, the there's actual skills. Scale Wait, sheer surface. It? A scale sheer surface? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, there it is. Warhammer has not. skills. <laughs> I'm really bad at this one. Okay. Yeah, you're. Oh, nice. are you? Well, yeah. Can we help? Um, I mean, if you guys kind of give him a bunk up, I'll give you another plus ten. Give him a total of twelve. Yeah, plus 20. I'll definitely. St uh, I'll yeah, no, uh, we would absolutely help. <laughs> Brace up against the wall. Put your foot off my head. Um, any amount of. Ooh, luck. yeah. Okay. <sighs> right. Um, it's that was that was with a plus twenty. Yeah. No. Um... <laughs> Wait, no, I don't think it went in right. Uh, my scales here so is 15. Yeah, no, that's plus 20. Wow. That's plus 20. Okay. Yeah, he's terrible Sorry. at it. Um, but neither to, neither to say, it's, it's not graceful. There's a few slips. Um, but he does manage to kind of scramble up onto the slate tiled roof. Um, and with that, I, is, I mean, is there a particular area you plan on trying to eavesdrop or? He went down a hall, right? And then into another room. Where, uh, when you went in there last, they walked down into a study, which did have a fireplace in it. Where, where you met with him last time. Is it? Is there smoke coming out of that? Let's find out. <laughs> this would be so much easier in D&D. &D. You'd just be like, I do something crazy and magical and ridiculous and everything's solved. <laughs> Okay, 50%, 50-50 is the fire lit or not. Purely down to blind luck. Under 50, and it is okay. not. A one! Oh. Not only is it not lit, but it hasn't been lit for a while. It's, yeah. Okay, um, I'm gonna move over to it and try and listen down. Okay, give me a perception I'm trying to roll. be quiet as I go, but yeah. Um, Here comes my Oh, I want to re-roll that. Do I? Okay. <laughs> yeah. If I can get a success here and hear it screaming, then I... Oh, come on. Oh! That's so close each time. I have one more one I can spend, but it just... Uh, you can't spend a two on the same roll. can't spend two on the same roll. So, um... It's a little bit of a fail, um, but not a complete fail. So I might give you tidbits of the conversation. Eh? Um, we'll go as far as to say that there are periodic loud outbursts from the dwarf. Of like um, protestation and stuff like that. Um, your gut tells me that they're having a conversation that he isn't liking. Um, by mm. just some of the the loud ex ex explanatives that, it, that kind of get bursted out of his mouth. Um, and then there's a couple of times we actually hear, hear her voice raised as she reminds him, Know your place, Goatree Hammerfist. I am a reverend of Sigma. Um, conversation goes on for probably about ten minutes. Um, and then you hear a door close. As the conversation comes to an end. What do you wish to do? I'm going to stay up here until I see her leave. Okay. Um, the door opens. And Gertrude walks out with an axe covered in blood. Bloody witch. Bloody witch. Um, bloody witch sympathizer. No. Um, <laughs> he walks out. Uh, and she's, like, behind him, holding his axe. Okay, then I'm gonna slip down the backside. He looks at you and uh, looks very embarrassed, 
not at you, but the rest of the people that are still there. Looks oh, very yeah, embarrassed and says, <laughs> um, w we might have to postpone our, uh, our supper for, uh, till tomorrow. She says, oh, I don't think you're going to be free for tomorrow. I think it might take a little longer than that. Come along. And with that, she kind of like just gently pats the pats his back and he drops <laughs> his head with a very solemn look and starts strolling down the street as she stumps behind him. Uh, as she kind of walks past... He objects, him, Mark's surprise. <laughs> as she walks by you, she just kind of like gives you a half nod um, and then carries on walking. Uh, and it's very clear that she is escorting goat, goat tree all the way back to the temple of the temple of Sigmar. Mm. <laughs> all right. So when they're out of earshot, they're gonna be like, "Well, I hope Conrad's not a. I mean, he's absolutely a tool, but I hope he's not an evil tool." <laughs> um. But first, I'm, unturning these stones has been really helpful. I'm I'm like sliding down the roof ungracefully. <laughs> I probably land really. He's nice. been putting time out. Yeah, um, that's a superhero land. The naughty, the naughty dwarves room. <laughs> but then, um, yeah, I, I just spring up and I'm like, we have to find this purple mage, as it were. If there's another option that isn't what the Jade Wizard suggested, I'd like to hear it. So I take it that things went okay in there for yeah, us anyway? Yes. Um, Unless they suspected you were listening. I'm not, like fucking paranoid now. <laughs> no, no. He, she gave him a stern talking to. He was yelling a lot, being very um, upset. And then every time she talked him down, he would, um, you know, come back to his senses a little bit. He'd still protest. Anyways. Uh, that's what that's about. All right, so we got to find find an amethyst wizard then that you don't know specifically what about. Yeah. Okay, so maybe this amethyst wizard visited the amethyst college while they were in town. If only we knew anyone from the amethyst college. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna be looking around, like <laughs> trying to find another person in the robes of the amethyst college. <laughs> I wonder where he. Uh, well, the last time you saw some was at the Grove. It was at the Grove, yeah. And we can also deliver our news to Messner that his dwarf problem is solved. Yeah, so I, I don't know where the college is here in town. How Seems can you that... not know? Simple, I was with you for the whole adventure in Middenheim. Yeah, but I thought the you good news is, if he can find knew. colleagues of his, it <laughs> well, shouldn't I mean, be the... hard for him to find out See, that's that's the thing. That's the thing, Bertilda. Wizards are people, too. That's what I said. Man. It's been saying. That's objective. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it, now, if you remember, the Grove doesn't open until quite late. Um... Uh, it's late afternoon now, so you've got an evening to burn if you want to burn it, or you can ask around and put our very quiet friend to use. Yeah, she See might you. be able to find us. Uh... Okay, well, soon as she's not here, um, I mean, just have Matthew her Bain... just have her send her out to do her thing. Um, sure. Matthew, Matthew Bain, don't you have like a? I mean, you know how, like, the Illuminati or the Freemasons or whatever have, like, their special handshakes and hands. Oh, yes. I, and I, I, just, <laughs> I just take my wand out and press it against the skull and snake shit in my fucking wrist. Yeah, do, do some yeah, shit do like that. that. Know exactly where to go. <laughs> okay, I mean, um, like, can't you just, like, walk up and be like, and they'll yeah. be like, oh, yeah. And you'll be like, that's the name of this wizard, well, right there. Well, I absolutely am not going to go to another of the colleges to ask where my college is. That's kind of embarrassing. <laughs> Not necessarily, not if you're an out-of-towner. It's fine, we'll just go to the city hall and ask for a map. I mean, okay, but how Where's else? Where's the kiosk? <laughs> it's information. Oh, here's such such one of those maps. You are park. here. Uh, yeah. Amethyst. Ah, oh, there it is. <laughs> what even is the theme at this park? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what do you expect to do when we find people of your college? You're still going to have to ask them where it is. Well, that's less embarrassing because I'm I was newly anointed, fresh 
out of my apprenticeship where I wasn't a part of it, but then uh, I hey, joined it. What you but would, how, how... what I can tell you, you definitely would know, is amethyst colleges quite often tend to locate themselves close to temples of more, and temples of more are usually where the dead are. Graveyards, the graveyards, yeah, exactly. Okay, so so yeah, I'm just gonna go up to a random person and say, uh, "Where's your local graveyard?" Just kind of matter of factly. <laughs> Pretty sure we can just find one. Um, <laughs> like, Okay, well, see, here's the thing. Wait, wait, graveyard wait, you... or cemetery? Because graveyards are, are in churches. Fair True. Okay, cemetery. <laughs> Where do uh, you store your dead? Give me a gossip roll. Oh, oh Jesus. Uh, That's where you need old debt. That's where we need old debt, yeah. My gossip is garbo. Because uh, generally, when you walk up to random strangers and ask them such questions, they usually walk away rather hastily rather than answer that. Sure, sure, sure. Especially when someone looks like you. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I mean, honestly, Odette would probably try yeah. too. Odette right? would just find okay. someone and be like, yeah. "Excuse me, so, uh, you can have Odette go and inquire more and... subtly." Give me. Uh, a... I'm new. I'm new in town. I had a relative that lived here that passed away. I'd like to go pay my respects, but I don't know where the cemetery is. There you go. It's give me a, a give me a roll using phone. Odette stats then. Uh, what is it again? Gossip. Got well, uh, oh, yeah, it would be gossip. She's so good at that. Yeah, she's, yeah right. She's that's her thing. I'm super she is jealous. The social character. She is all over that stuff. She, oh yeah, fifty-seven. Piss easy for her. I think she got like a seventy. Uh, She's yeah, a seventy-two. 72. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, it doesn't take her very long to find out exactly where it is. The insane, deathly not. looking fellow goes, "Where's the graveyard? Where are your dead?" <laughs> well, no, I literally said, "Where's the graveyard?" Oh, I mean cemetery. Where's your dead? Yeah, that would turn anyone off. Okay. Let's be real here. So, um, we can go ahead and label these for you. Oh god, there's more than one? Well, there's the temple. I mean, it is a big town. City. Place. That's a big-ass graveyard. Or cemetery. Alright, so there's the Temple of Moor, which is right here. Up in here. Here. And... Where is the temple up in here? Up in here, up in here. (laughs) <laughs> I, want the, I, want the, I want the temple up in here. <laughs> and then here. the Amethyst College is right there. <laughs> Gotta collect them all. <laughs> right, yeah. We've got all, all the temples all the time. Second. Yeah, that on the right layer. Okay. All right. Yeah. So the Temple of Moor is there. Here is the expansive graveyard, and then there is the Amethyst College. Incorrectly in their spam or junk folder. <laughs> okay. Um, so the Amethyst College is home to those wizards who study the lore of death. Um, and it fully looks the part. The building stands overlooking a haunting cer- um, cemetery of old Altdorf, uh, where in the time of the Red Plague, thousands were buried with more concern for haste than cemetery, giving it a really hodgepodge, rundown, disorganized look. The main oh, temple is... of Moor in Altdorf is only a few streets away, and the area this... around the two institutes is filled with shops of a more solemn nature such as undertakers monumental masons <laughs> and lawyers um there are very <laughs> few homes since few people even those piss poor are willing to live in such an ill omened area those who do tend to live here would be eccentric and um possibly deranged you you, you fit right in matthew Payne. um anyone with any sanity would be foolish to live here Um, And it's generally known that it's not the sort of place you're going to find necromancers and stuff, even though it would seem like it, because it would be too bloody obvious. Um, The college itself is built of dark black stone in an elaborate gothic style. Yes. They don't don't hide it. they're, They're not in... The sheer look of it is enough to keep people away for them. They don't need to hide it. 
<laughs> um, yeah, oh, uh, I, I can see why you joined this it's one. An elaborate no, it, it, it's an elaborate style hearkening nice. of an earlier age. The windows and doors are topped with pointy arches. The windows are tall and narrow, and statues stand in niches scattered around the face of the buildings with gargoyle broods and the eaves of steeply pitched roofs. Numerous crooked, narrow towers rise from the bulk of the building, adorning with um, balconies with iron spiked gratings along them and fences. Each tower ends in a steeply pointed spire, which is home to hundreds, if not thousands, of little black rodents. Um, every day um, at sunset, these creatures would pour from the college like living smoke against the red of the setting sun. Oh, we have um, one of those here. Yeah. The bridge that you go to in the, in the like, when it starts to sunset and all the bats come out. There you go. Yeah. Um, but these bats are about the only sign of life. Um, much like most of the colleges, people are rarely ever seen entering and leaving. Um, and there are people in Altdorf who swear that they have spent whole days watching the college and never seen a living soul. Even at night, lights are hardly ever seen within the college. Although reports of pale, ghostly lights can be seen moving around from one tower to the other or flitting around in the graveyard. Oh, that's normal. The doors of the Amethyst College always stand open. A stone portal with a pale pillar, a dark pillar, and a, linted car uh, um, and a lintel carved with the symbols of the college in the center. An hourglass flanked by skulls and bones. And thorns, rose, uh, thorned roses twine around the whole imagery. A scythe is, scad is carved into each of the upright columns. While on the door is not a copy of the portal of the Temple of Moor, it is close enough to remind most old warders of death and mortality. <laughs> While it looks like it could be welcoming to anybody, because the doors are open, it offers no such vibe, and nobody takes them up on it. <laughs> uh, I could go on, but that's enough. So, as we were approaching the cemetery and college, uh -huh. I would absolutely channel... Um, and I think Matthew Bain is a goth. Completely wow. fail. So I channel Ooh, again one. using a fortune points. And don't fail? <laughs> and not fail? Uh-huh. I probably didn't even need to channel because this is such a low uh, spell. Hey, okay. don't, don't. Snake <laughs> Oh, he you're jinxed gonna, himself. Gonna, look. Well, I'm only Double using one magic three. characteristic. I'm not doing two. Um, I am casting Death Sight okay. because I don't want to walk through ghosts. I want to be respectful of them because kind of my purview, right? Like, Okay. So, yes, I absolutely succeed. All right. So, um, yeah. Yeah. There are a few unpleasant kind of apparitions that you can be that you can kind of see. Not the kind that would manifest and be harmful, but there's sure. definitely some um, semblance so, of lost souls lingering around. So, so, so as we approach the college, you're going to see Matthew Bain start to be. Kind of weird, like moving er. around invisible <laughs> things. I'm, I'm moving so around. We I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm like this. I'm like, like, excuse me. Uh, sorry, sir. <laughs> no, I, I really am like maneuvering around them. Yeah, thanks, Mikey. When yeah. you guys don't obviously see anything there, okay. I'm just like, nope, 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 not, not there. Just follow me. Just you know, All right. weave, um, bob and weave, bob and weave. Once you get in there, you can see a handful of rather unpleasantly dressed individuals, probably mostly. Um, you know, apprentices that are sitting around on gothic benches studying big, thick, heavy vellum tomes. Um, Matthew Bain, question. Shh, shh, shh. <laughs> Lower your voice like a library. Question. What's up, Matilda? Why is this called the Amethyst College? Because it's purple and cool. I haven't That's... seen any color since we well, that's because it's black on purple on black. It looks kind of like another form of black, you know? It's, Why not? Use you guys, you guys see it outside. Well, you could talk a little bit about it for me, <laughs> for, for, this, for chat's sake. Yeah. Yeah, the robes are kind of like a box? deep, dark purple. <laughs> They're very, I mean, they almost look black, but they've got a very subtle purplish tinge to them. 
<laughs> you know, like, like deep purple. Smoke they should rename the it water. the Onyx College. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> maybe the Onyx College or... Maybe you but could I, do a reverse thing and trade names with the Light College. But ah, it's kind of like a Little John sort of thing. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, there we go. <laughs> Amethyst is just such a cooler name, don't you think? Right, Caterell? Come on. Like, of all the words in English and uh, common. I think Onyx is a nice. Onyx Amethyst. is also pretty cool, yeah. Onyx you... and Amethyst together, though? Snatched. Anyway, just think of these guys as morose. Oh, yeah. Not lively. You never um, struck me as a goth. I just want to point for the record. You the should only... like labels, right? <laughs> the... He's the not only very reason... good at it yet. He'll, he'll get that. The only reason why I joined this college of the others was because of that brewery journey we went, dealing with that undead stuff. We didn't have a way to really tackle it, so I stepped up. That's how you know why this became my calling and my apprenticeship in Mendenheim. Huh? See? Thank you for the party. Did you just dab? <laughs> no, that was a sneeze. So <laughs> you, you were well, you sneeze into a, your elbow. I know you sneeze into your elbow, but you went like this. So I was just like, okay. Yeah, no, but they do the fingers thing because, like, that's not a dab anymore. That's a jazz dab. It's a little different. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I just go ahead and dab when I sneeze. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, no. I, when sure. we were when we were kids in high school, we used to go like this and like, you know. Like <laughs> so. Oh, do we have any like gold from everybody? Here too. Well, I just just you know they might require um, payment, you know, for my membership. So for you, oh, um, oh, you know, oh, he's gonna pay his college entry fees. <laughs> you know, it's not free. I mean, I do, ha I actually do have gold, so I can probably cover it for now. But just so you know, there's costs involved, and me being an elf, I didn't think I had to deal with it. But you know. I want to be uh, respectful. I've, I've heard of this. I'm going to take two pennies and just put them on my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see anything. Is it working? Gallo's humors go over really well here. Um, yeah, I'm just going to enter the building, hoping okay. that everyone follows. I will um, do so reluctantly, but I will. <laughs> nobody bats an eyelid. Maybe one studious individual is like, glances up, but that's about all you get. Eventually, as you kind of glance around, um, you'll catch the eye of a journeyman wizard. Oh, fellow brethren. Hey. <laughs> I'll approach him. Or her. Okay. He gives you a solemn nod. Oh. Welcome, brother. You recognize me with my getup. Oh, welcome. Hello. I'm going to mutter it all day. I think they have too much color in here. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, Does the carpet uh, my... match the drapes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Got amethyst pubes. Let's go. No, right. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> Pretty goth vibe going on. <laughs> so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna look at him and be like, um, I am looking for someone of a higher authority than you and I, um, if that's at all possible, of a matter of extreme importance. I can direct you to somebody? Is there anyone in particular you have in mind? Uh, well, it would be a she. Uh, some reputation who recently traveled with some dwarves in some mountains. Mm, does not ring a bell. Well, any uh, master wizard or lord wizard of a female persuasion? Maybe mm, there it's are gotta be a woman. two I mean, I know master that's who we're wizards for, but... <laughs> that would fit the description. Well, either or would work for me now at this point in time. Okay, um, no. fifty fifty. Roll it under a fifty. <laughs> It'll be the right one over the fifty. It will not. <laughs> Yay! Son of a bitch. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> You know, Matthew Bain. He goes long, off and brings the female persuasion. I'm gonna look at. <laughs> he goes off and comes back with a, oh, 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 kind of a fairly old woman wearing the regalia of a higher-ranking amethyst wizard. 
Does she look like she can travel, like climb mountains and shit? Or is, uh, when you say old, um, I don't know what... probably. Does he look like a bitch? <laughs> <laughs> late late fifties, maybe. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so she kind of wanders up, and he says, "This member of our brethren wants to talk to somebody of Master or Lord." And she says, "Welcome. What can I do for you?" Have you come to study? You look oh. like you need to uh, reconvene your studies. Perhaps some new robes. No, what I got on is just fine. It doesn't it's work. Really, it's really not fine, and some new robes would be marvelous, wouldn't they? <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'll pay any membership fees that are required. I'm being an elf. I didn't think I had to. If you're not but... enrolling here at this particular college, there are no need to pay any fees, but a customary donation wouldn't go amiss. How's 25 golds now? <laughs> <laughs> How does my life savings look? From what, what, would, what would be an appropriate amount, actually? It would be rude for me to suggest such an amount. No, I'm not asking, I'm asking you, Cor. Oh. Um, You tell me. I mean... <laughs> I don't know. You're going to make me do this? <laughs> I, I, I mean, like, okay. knowing yeah, currencies yeah, I, and I stuff. Mean, Gore's like, oh, okay. Anything less than a couple of gold. <laughs> anything less than a couple of gold would be an insult. Beyond okay. that, it's kind of how wealthy are you? Okay, I'll give ten gold. Okay. I actually have quite a lot of gold, and I don't care for it. Don't need it. Uh, she she palms it from you quite happily, and she says, "Generous." Oh God, she turned into the Sigmar priestess. <laughs> well, is there anything? If you're not here to study, I suppose you have questions. My what are uh, they? My friends and I are pursuing a dangerous chaos artifact in the city, and we were told that there's a person here with the ability to dispose of it, destroy it. Rumors, hearsay. Well, we have access to the artifacts and would very much like to shuffle it off its mortal coil, if you know what I mean. I see. Do you have a way of destroying chaos artifacts? I do not. Do you have it with you? Not yet. N not yet. To... I'd very much like to see it. Oh. Hmm. It's about this big. <laughs> um. It's in the possession of another wizard from another college who would not part with it until we proved to him that we knew and had a means of destroying it. And we were told... Uh, by a priestess of Sigmar, that it would we could find said person here. Actually, she just said it was an amethyst wizard, and she said it was rumors. So, right, but a, a her wizard who recently traveled with some dwarves on the mountaintops. She may not be here anymore, Matthew Bain. You're speaking of Lady Gabrielle Masna. She did not travel with dwarves, although she did point some dwarves in the correct direction fairly recently. Oh, so she's not traveling with them? No. Is she still in the city? Oh, yes. She is here at the temple or at the college. Um, but uh, she generally does not receive visitors, especially ones unfamiliar to her. We have been working our way through the various social circles in this city. Maybe there's a person of that's an intermediary, if you will. Perhaps. Um, <laughs> she should take out a list. All right. <laughs> These are my vaccines. Uh, this is my. <laughs> we we are uh, on good terms with uh, Dieter Klemper, Klemperer, uh, Lord Frederick von Keller. Conrad Mesner, Maximilian Sayer, Clara Robin, ah, Theodora, uh, we got one, we got one the Ferrig. Oh, yeah, okay. Yes. Are you just throwing these names around idly, thinking it will impress me? Or do you actually... No. No, no, no we're, we're looking for one that, that is familiar to the college. <laughs> A mutual acquaintance, not to spout off the residence. Mm. I mean, of course we... Have dealings with Clara Roban from time to time. She's the one that suggested 
we look into the amethyst. But she didn't give you the name, so she cannot be too familiar with Gabrielle. She didn't uh, know the name, no. No, she didn't. But we were sent here either way to speak with her over some pretty important, I would say, um, tasks. Mm, very well, I will see if she will see you, but I won't be surprised if she says no. Unless you have anything of more of a persuasive jewel to dangle. I left all my amethyst at home. <laughs> um, I'm going to look through my pockets. <laughs> but amethyst I have is pockets. relatively common. Onyx might be a bit... Because <laughs> I have pockets in my armor. <laughs> Uh, is there a particular jewel to dangle that I was speaking used? metaphorically got it Matthew Bain <laughs> you, you'll have to forgive him he's new uh, a jewel of information that might pique her interest to where she might be willing to talk to you well the artifact in question is one of three called the dagger of Yokochum Yokochum I don't believe that's called that. I think you just made that up. <laughs> <laughs> what a stupid oh. name. <laughs> and, and we are a party recently from Middenheim, where we dealt with another chaos artifact that was destroyed in the Temple of Ulrich. Oh, wait. It wasn't destroyed. Wasn't that, it? That, that was you. Uh, oh, well, it was like pacified, that, right? Yeah, yes, that, that was us. Oh. He had to fight well, maybe your strange chaos. Maybe place. you're not... Nobody's then. Um, do you, do you... corn worshippers in the Church of Ulrich? <laughs> Ulrich it was upsetting. Maybe. Yeah, you, I mean, you've got the arm thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> are, 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 the show for it. <laughs> are Are you a follower? <laughs> I um, highly doubt it. No, no, we are all worshippers of more here. But oh, that makes sense. Cause... Um, but the followers of Ulrich do. A great duty and justice in bringing as many new visitors to the graveyards as more as most do, as long between more um, and ourselves here. We're very grateful for the Churchhood of Sigmar and for Ulrich in bringing so many new souls to the ground. I'm going to look incredibly uncomfortable <laughs> with that. <laughs> That's, that's my main squeeze on my side. I'll mention that to her. <laughs> <laughs> if nothing Thank else, you. she might be curious to hear about your exploits. Wait here. Oh, one more thing. Um, Don't stare and give her as much privacy as she requires. If she should become uncomfortable, she'll expel you. Oh. From the, sure. from the temple. Oh, Fair okay. enough. <laughs> Okay. She wanders off, and eventually she comes back and says, Well, Gabrielle Marsner said that she would see you briefly. Okay. Down the hallway, the last door on the left. Thank you. Your left or my left? No, okay. <laughs> well, when you're walking down the hallway, there's only one left. <laughs> Use that one. Well, there's multiple doors down the hallway. I'm confused now. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna nod appreciation and walk down the hallway to said door. Okay. The left. Um, you get to the last door. Um, there is a plaque that says "Do not disturb." Oh, I disturb it. The plaque. Don't disturb the plaque. It says not to. <laughs> I disturb around the plaque, not the plaque itself. I knock on the oh, door. Okay. Not That's the fine. Okay. <laughs> yeah. A voice says, Enter. Oh, one time. Let's go. Don't like that. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to open the door and enter. I think uh, I have some okay, the room first. is pitch black, save one little candle that is on the far right corner. She is in the far left corner. Cloaked in robes, her hood is definitely oversized on purpose. Jeez. Um, uh, to the point where you cannot probing. see any of her facial f uh, features at all. Um, okay. These are voluminous purple robes with a deep hood. Um, and everything kind of hangs off of her like a deep drape. Um, she is also wearing long purple gloves. Um, 
and there is not an ounce of her skin that can be seen visible. Oh, good. She's a Dementor. <laughs> she says, What brings you... <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, I had to clear my voice. What brings you here? <laughs> Corey, you're <laughs> such a troll. You're such a troll. I'm going to be like, um, Hello, uh, my name is uh, Matthew... Matthew, uh, Matthew, what's my name? Matthew, Matthew Bain. Bain. My, my name is Matthew Bain, and these are my friends, uh, fellow accompaniments from Midnight. And Utengerd. I want to look up yes. her kind of like the side eye. Utengerd. Uh, we are uh, pursuing a dangerous chaos artifact in the city and seek means to destroy it. And we're told that you knew. I discovered a ritual, yeah. Yes, what, what my friend Bertilda said. Please. And, and we would we would like your assistance in destroying the artifact if you would be so kind. If if should it be true, yes. Miss Miss Gab Gabriella, Miss Miss Gab. <laughs> I'm just gonna let the the silence endure. Maybe she didn't hear us, Matthew Bain. I'm sure she did. Oh, maybe she's just thinking about it then. Okay. Nope, she's not saying a thing. I'm not saying a thing either. I'm just I'm letting okay. it sit. Then the awkward silence slowly begins to fill the room and devour it. <laughs> are, are you? Are you? Uh, are you there? Still awake? Maybe. Hopefully. Of course. Your robes are pretty. Um. Is, is there anything we could say or answer to uh, with this request uh, that would help this conversation? And <laughs> how did you hear about the ritual? Uh, well, Cl the Priestess Clara from the 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 Church of Sigmar. She said that she had heard that a amethyst wizard had discovered a ritual that could dispatch of chaos artifacts in people do speak far too freely in this city apologies well, well such an artifact is a uh... A cause for concern for many in the city so those who are friends to each other or at least know each of each other um have been helping us in our and various what about the brass pursuits. skull how did you destroy that we haven't well we we're, we're we, still looking for a way to destroy it we rendered it inert though didn't we and we i could have sworn know. we did I could have sworn we did. <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> okay, okay. Out, out again. I'm pretty sure because it was activated, and then like we, like kind of canceled the ritual while it was activated, and then it got locked in a bigger box in a bigger vault. Man, um, I really don't remember that I, whole so, part of the ending. Look, so so the I don't think we thing... did anything. I think Ulrich himself like blessed everything on the floor. I so, mean, yeah, but see, the problem so is the right. fact that the three artifacts exist, right? Because we right. can't let the three of them come in contact with each other. So right. if we can destroy it'll, at least one of them... It'll reactivate the other skull, the skull, if, if the... Uh... We'll burst out of our skin <laughs> if they come in contact. So Which is nice. <laughs> we, uh, we just need to destroy one of them. But yeah, they said they didn't know how to destroy it. That was the issue. I think that's what happened. I, it's it's been you could say it's been like a year and a half since I've thought about what happened there exactly. <laughs> um, if too many people know about the ritual, I would become a target for many foul cultists. It I disturbs that. me I, that I, you I... would be able to find out about it so freely. That is a problem. I must have words. With the Reverend Roban. 
In any case, I've never cast the ritual. I don't even know if I could successfully do so. However, I do indeed know of a ritual. Wouldn't happen to involve somebody having to be no, no. used as a vessel and... Okay. It is known as the cleansing of the corrupt vessel, in fact. It requires the artifact to be cleansed. Eight silver arrows placed around the artifact pointing towards it. A distorted mirror, which has to be shattered at sunset during the ritual. The casting must start at dawn and ends at the dawn of the following day, therefore it takes 24 hours from start to finish. It must take place where the light of the rising sun can fall directly on the artifact, which generally means outside. And it's very dangerous and uh, quite potentially can kill the person casting it if it fails. Uh, the ritual in theory destroys any chaos spirit bound into an object. Um, has no effects on demons outside of the object or mutants, beastmen, cultists of any sort. Similarly, it has no effects on enchanted items no matter how corrupt their magic might be used. Unless they actually contain a chaos spirit bound within. Over the course of the ritual, my mind would become particularly open to the spirit of the artifact and the power of the ritual. Restricts what the demons can do, but the dreadful images that I have been told that I would see could potentially drive me insane, if not worse. They say that over the course of many, many hours, you will be assaulted numerous times. And that it takes those with the strongest will to resist. And if the ritual is successful, the bound spirit is destroyed at the first rays of rising sun as they strike the artifact. And if it fails... The entity will break free and kill that that casts it. I must confess, I have only recently just been granted the position of Master Wizard. And while I did get gifted this particular ritual at great expense from some acquaintances of mine, I have yet had means or will to try it. Um, and I know you don't know me from anyone else, but I, I would ask that you try, but I would not blame you <laughs> if you refused. Where is the artifact now? You said it was in the possession of another wizard? It's a light wizard named Conrad Mesner. Then it's probably quite safe. I'm sure it wouldn't be better left alone. Locked up in a vault somewhere. I don't wonder that myself, but we were tasked by the Church of Sigmar in Middenheim. Then why doesn't the Church of Sigmar figure out how to destroy it instead of burdening the Amethyst College? It's a time-sensitive issue from what we've been told. It, it was uh, it was Dieter who set us on this course in Altorf. He was our first contact. And he impressed upon us, along with others from Middenheim, that this was a time-sensitive issue that we needed to seek out the other two artifacts. If you're wondering why they sent us and gave us this task, I'm wondering the same thing. Well, <laughs> we were instrumental in, in cleansing the deputy high priest in Middenheim. I've already. heard of these tales. and uh, well, We were there. My colleague told me that you were the ones that dealt with that problem. This is true. And clearly, you must have some aptitude. Uh, I must confess, 
It is less a faith in your ability and more a lack of faith in my own. As I said, I simply don't know if I would successfully be able to cast the ritual or not. Well, the, um... The Jade College has a ritual themselves, but it involves a willing sacrifice. Are any of you willing, by chance? And not with our egos. Hmm. I'm and just going to kind of look at the floor. Is their methodology guaranteed? Did he feel... Are they confident that their method would work? It it, it entails uh, taking the dark entity within the dagger, infusing it into a willing sacrifice, and then killing said sacrifice with the entity within it. With, the yes. trouble of that is the uh, willful sacrifices that imbued with not just the power of the spirit encased within the artifact, but also its will and intent. So we would have to distract it before we killed it once the ritual completed. Possibly dying ourselves. We should, if we should choose to do that ritual, we should try to surround ourselves with more powerful allies. If that ritual is more guaranteed, and if this artifact is one that is so heinous while my ritual doesn't require a sacrifice it could potentially kill the caster and set the thing free perhaps one that is more assured to succeed even though the price is higher might not be a better way to go I cannot make that decision for you since it's clear that this task is set upon you and your shoulders and your responsibility. So I will say this, if you decide that you wish to attempt to destroy the thing using the cleansing of the corrupt vessel, I will agree to try it, as long as you understand that in doing so, a failure could be catastrophic. She's right. What would we do if she failed? The same could be said if of the other ritual. What if we failed um, to no. kill the thing as it's possessed and you run rampants? We well. would do Someone well, could kill them. We would do well to seek the audience of um, those we've already spoken with and see what they think on the matter now that all of our cards have been revealed. But that would entail telling them of this ritual that she wants We quiet. do not have to go into detail. But even letting them know that the such ritual a ritual exists exist. in the Amethyst College would uh, be against her wishes. Again, we don't need that detail. There is something I might be able to give you to help with your decision. The right smack upside the head. In the top right <laughs> drawer there, you will find a pack of rather strange marked cards. I'm gonna look at Matthew Bain. I'm gonna be the. I'm gonna head over there. I, okay. I, 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 I'm gonna head over there and open it and extract said cards. Hold them out in front of me <laughs> like an <Okay>. offering. <laughs> he uh, says. If you're willing, draw a card. But when you do so, think clearly in your head, Two of Swords, for that is the card you want. You must will that card to be drawn from the deck. If your will is not strong enough, you will draw a different card, and I cannot be responsible for what happens when you draw it. It could be good or bad. All right, guys, who has the strongest will? <laughs> me, actually. <laughs> yeah. Really? Probably me. I mean, I'm a wizard. Uh, You're a wizard. My will, is, my will is damn strong. Yeah, I got a 
Well, not damn strong, but it's stronger. Yeah, roughly speaking, like out of a hundred, I'm probably like a forty-six. <laughs> <laughs> if I had to I'm put a number on it, stronger than you. <laughs> um, two of swords, you said. The two of swords. As I said, you must will the card out of the deck. If you fail, another card of the so, deck's choosing will be drawn. Do do I shuffle first? I assume so. I mean, well. no, no, there is no <laughs> oh, need. Don't shuffle. Okay. If I'm gonna. This is the deck of cards belonging to the Master Wilhelm, a legendary figure reputedly a powerful wizard, who mastered high magic before the times of Magnus the Pious. Even before the time of Sigmar, according to some stories, he supposedly crafted a most powerful magical item, including a deck of 78 cards, each of which has a different power. In my adventures, I acquired most of these cards, and through great expense and personal sacrifice, managed to complete the deck only four moons ago. I will never draw another of the cards. It has taken its toll on me. You feel lucky, Matthew May? <laughs> so, so I, I am like Matthew Bane doesn't care. He probably would just instantly, but because I follow Bertilda, and I know this opinion of me that's been circulating in the group, I'm gonna turn to the party with the deck in hand and say. I will happily draw thinking of the, the card in question, but you guys have this opinion of me that I've already lost my marbles or whatever. So, can I? Do you want me to or what? Matthew Bain, I think that's a terrible way to approach this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that, I, I think it would be, I thought that would be what you wanted. Considering your opinion, you're saying I'm a nine in annoyance it now. It seems we've been given an opportunity here, Matthew Bain, and if our opinions should cause you doubt, cast those aside. So you want me to take all the times in the past month and a half, or however long we've been here, of you questioning my, my choices, my judgments, my bathing rituals, this isn't how, like those. How strong... Should now all of a sudden be okay with it? Really? No, it shouldn't matter what we think in this moment, Matthew Bain. It doesn't. I am completely resolute to do what, what I've been tasked to do and asked to do. But you guys were filled with such doubt. Now that you're, the opportunity is there, you guys aren't jumping down my throat? Do you believe in yourself, Matthew Bain? I've, I've always said uh, yes, of course. There's nothing wrong with me. I've said that from day one. Then of, I don't understand why we're having this conversation. I'm just surprised you guys are fighting me on this. Oh, don't let the crazy man draw the card. You know, that's what I was expecting. I'm just surprised, I guess. Just don't whip yourself with the card and we're fine. Put it, put it this way, Matthew Bain. You're right. We have been giving you a hard time since we got here because we do think that you're slightly losing your mind. But you've also fought us every step of the way and still insist that you're not. Because I'm not. That shows us that you do actually have pretty good will. Draw the card! <laughs> <laughs> so yes, I'm going to think on the two of swords. That is the card, right? I mean, yes. I'm just, no, that's, yeah, that's okay, it. Okay, I'm just making sure. <laughs> and I'm going to draw a card. Just, oh, I meant three! No, sorry. Oh. <laughs> okay, make a willpower test. All right, I do get to use my fortune point if I fail, right? You do, as long as you have one. It's fortune points I do. on any dice roll. Well, that's a failure. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. So we have a 50-50 now. This is going to be fun. Um, oh, shit! Oh, man. <laughs> Are you spoiling? Oh, no, I was going to tell you to wait till next week. <laughs> Okay. Oh, well, then that didn't count. That clearly didn't count. No, it count. absolutely No, counts. no, it didn't count. It. Um, all right, buddy. Roll a percentage dice. If it's above 78, um, roll it again. <laughs> Should you happen to roll a two, you'll get that card anyway. Percentage <laughs> so dice, right? Yeah. 
want over 72? No, you want no, two. Basically, oh, I want a two. You want a two to get the two of swords. Got it. Um, but oh, anything I, I see. from one to yeah, 78 one will tell me what card you pull. Oh, it would be so cool if that was actually two. No. Yeah. 67. <laughs> <laughs> what well, does five was... of napkins mean? Well, see, <laughs> yep. roleplay wise, story wise, this makes perfect sense. You guys have been inundating him with doubt, despite yeah. his insistence. Yes, that's right, Shaggy. Blame it on us. <laughs> I am blaming it on you. <laughs> Absolutely. So cool. <laughs> what does the five of napkins mean? Um, all right. You're off by two. You sit there thinking ah. two of swords, two of swords, two of swords, two of swords, two of swords. But your moments of doubt creep into your brain as you slide out you guys, the card. It's all your faults. The second the card... Not, you could have said yes! The second the card <laughs> leaves the pack, it immediately pff, vanishes. However, you feel an excruciating pain on the back of your right hand. Oh, God. Okay. Almost as if somebody just put a hot iron on the back of your hand and burned you like ah and it burns so bad as you glance down there is indeed a mark left on the back of your right hand and that's all i'm going to tell you tonight we'll find out the rest of the information on <laughs> thursday all right guys well thanks for hanging out with us thanks for our subs thanks for our resubs Thank you for everybody that cheered and followed. Uh, we've had a blast. Hope you have two. We will see you on Monday here at normal time. Um, and uh, play some more D&D. You have a great weekend. Take care, guys. Bye. Bye.